Um, hello, John. Do you mind if I call you John? I, I mean, you don't actually know me. It's just, well, archivist. It's so formal, isn't it? And I do kind of know you. Haven't had much choice, really. Dreams are like that, you know. No matter how lucid you think they are, there's always that part that just drags you along. Guess I don't need to tell you that. At least, not right now. <sighs> I wish I could tell you why I came here. I wish I knew why I came here. I suppose there's only so long you can dream about someone and not at least try to find them. That was it with the old woman, too. That was different, though. Way I figure it? She stuck her nose in just about everywhere it wasn't wanted and stirred up hornets, till all the precautions in the world couldn't stop death from finally catching her. If I'd have known more back then, I'm not sure I'd have bothered trying to warn her. Still, you live and learn, don't you? Sorry to go on. I, I don't talk to many people these days. Putting my thoughts outside myself, it gets a bit... Mm, clumsy. Be easier if you could talk back, right? Ask me questions and just have it tumble all out. But no, it's, it's just me. Wish there was a better way, but touching someone's mind, it's not as simple as that, is it? Doesn't always make things clearer, you know? Still... I gave the old woman a statement, so maybe I owe you one as well. That's how it works, right? Give you a terror? Give you a dream? It's not like I don't have them to spare. Hmm. Let me tell you about how I tried to escape. Right. That's uh, it, I suppose. Maybe you heard me. Maybe you'll dream. Then again, maybe I just wasted my breath. But I don't think so. Honestly, I'm still not exactly sure why I'm here. But you know better than anyone how the spiders can get into your head. Easier to just do what she asks. The thing is, John, right now, you have a choice. You've put it off a long time, but it's trapping you here. You're not quite human enough to die but still too human to survive. You're balanced on an edge where the end can't touch you, but you can't escape him. I made a choice. We all made choices. Now you have to... Can I help you? Uh, I'm a friend of John's. Are you now? Y yes. Right, just haven't seen you visiting before. Um, I I've been out of town. Right. The nurse didn't say anyone else was here. No, oh, oh, oh. Well, uh, sorry if I surprised you. It's fine. I'm Antonio. Sure. Do you um, mind giving us a minute? No, I think you're done here. Oh. Uh, right. Have I upset you, miss? No, you just remind me of someone. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. Were they... Evil. Yes. Uh, okay, then. I, I just... I guess I should just go. I guess you should. Make your choice, John. Sorry about that, but you really don't need friends like that. Did... Hey! Hey, get back here! I need to talk to you!
Well? It was just there. Could he have come back? Moved it? I guess. And you're sure you didn't recognise him? No, no, he was, um... I've never seen him before. But? He, uh, He felt like death. What? Capital D, death? Yeah. You know, one of your dark gods. They're not... Look, I'm trying to help. You came to me. I came to Melanie. Well, sorry. Right now, I'm it. So John told you then? Some of it. Not everything. Right. So how exactly is it that you're able to identify an avatar of the end on sight? Honestly, Basira, it's not your business. Sorry. <laughs> All right. And you don't know why this guy would have left the tape recorder? You're the detective. And you're sure it was him who left it? I mean, the nurses said there were no other visitors, so... Unless it appeared by magic? What, seriously? I don't know. The whole tape thing is... I don't know. Right, well... I showed you like you asked, so... Shh. Down here. I told you. This is the one? Sure. You don't sound very sure. I mean... I don't know, it might be a different model, maybe? I thought it was plastic, but... yeah. So, what does it mean? That's a very good John, question. Jesus! <laughs> Sorry. Didn't mean to scare you. I'll get a nurse. Wait. Basira. John, is it still... you? Uh, y yes. Y yes, I, I think so. I, I don't know how you'd prove it, though. Hmm. Enough. Just stay still. I'll get a nurse. Uh, no, I, uh, I'm all right. Stop it's, it. I'm okay. John, you are not okay. You have been in a coma. Wait. Wait. Uh, how long? Six months, give or take. Six. Uh, the others. T Tim. Uh, is he... Daisy, too. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. John! Look, it's all right. Just stay still, please. <sighs> How are you feeling? Honestly, I... I, I think I'm all right. <laughs> I mean, that's good. Right? I... After a six-month coma? No, it's not. This isn't how it's supposed to go, John. I... What? Y you'd prefer I was brain damaged? Dead? John. I... What? Georgie, could you give us a minute? There's some things we should probably Fine. discuss. Fine. Georgie, I... John, I... if this really is a second chance, please try to take it. But I don't think that it is. Georgie, I don't... Take un care of yourself. <sighs> what about you? Disappointed to see me alive? Sarah? We can deal with it later. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Do you want me to grab you some water, or...? Uh, no, uh, the, the, uh, the, the statement in your, in your bag. Oh. Yeah, I, uh... I just grabbed one on the way out. I thought maybe you'd need it. You, you were right. I, I think it would do me some good. Do you have a tape... Oh. How did you know I brought one? Right. Thank you, Vizera. Hmm. Well, that certainly helped, I think. No notes or follow-up in the statement, and obviously no research done by myself or uh, my team. I think we can safely say that Ms. St. John is not the only real person left in the world, though, whatever she might be doing now. 
whatever might be with her. They can be hard, though. Sometimes other other people. Feelings. I, I'm, I'm trying to focus. I'm trying to make sure I'm the same me as before, but... How can anyone really remember that? How do you know you're the same person that went to sleep? Uh, yes, I'm... I'm done. Georgie, is she, uh... She's gone. Didn't see where. No, I, I wouldn't have... Uh, probably for the best. Yeah. Better? Yes. Yes, thank you. Right. Then I've got questions. So do I. Me first. What are you? Honestly, I don't know. I don't feel inhuman or... I want to say I'm the same, but I don't really know if that's true. I know I'm different. I feel more real, somehow. So what does that actually mean? Probably nothing good. My turn. What what happened to me? How much do you remember? I don't... Music. Everything was wrong. Gertrude was there, and then... Dancing, I think. Then... Pain. And I was somewhere else. Dreaming. Dreaming? Yes. You're sure uh, about Tim? Yeah, they, um... They found his remains a few days later. And Daisy? They still haven't found her body. Probably never will. I thought for a while she might, um... <laughs> but it's been months. She's gone. Just you and me. And Melanie and... Martin, I, I guess. Honestly, I'm surprised Martin isn't... What? Oh, God. The the plant, it's... Martin, is... Is he okay? What did Elias do? No, nothing. Elias isn't the problem. So, what? Elias is locked up. Wait, Martin's plan worked? Yeah, a bunch of sectioned officers took him in. He made some sort of deal, I think. But he's not getting out anytime soon. Oh. Wow, uh, okay. Uh, great, so what's the problem? He appointed an interim director. A guy named Peter Lucas. Oh. Yeah. Read about him. <laughs> yeah, I hunted down some of those old statements and... Yeah. What did he do to Martin? I... Don't know. We don't see him around the archives much these days. Best I can figure, he's working on something with Lucas. No, that, no, that 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 must be something else. Maybe, I don't know. And Melanie? A lot's happened while you've been gone. Right. Well, I guess we should probably let one of the nurses know I'm awake. I'm sure they have all sorts of. Tests to do. Make sure I'm not a zombie, or... I don't suppose you brought in any clothes? No, I just, you know, grabbed that statement on my way out. Right, well, uh, I kept some in the uh, archives uh, in my office. Yeah, those got, um... We had to throw those out. What? Like I said, a lot's happened. S since I've been fine. I'll get you some new ones. Better ones. Anything else? Water, please. Sure thing. Oh, or uh, a cup of... T okay. End recording, I suppose. Right. Where did the... Oh, great.
great. Let's rearrange his office. Sleeping people don't need pens. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, what? Melanie! Makes me good to, uh... Melanie, are you... Oh, whoa! Get away from me! M Melanie, it's, it's me. No, no. No, no, I, I, no. I'm back. Oh, oh, yeah. Back to your happy little family. What? No, I, di I didn't mean... To... How did you make it out, then? Hmm? What? Tim is dead. Daisy is dead. And you? What? You're just fine. Wait, no, I've been in hospital for six months. Something has been in hospital. Something that's got your face. I, I warned Basira. I said not to let you back in here, but she just doesn't. Melanie, Listen. Melanie, it's, it's me. Oh, okay, so what? Hi, John. How are you? Get anyone killed lately? I, I... Why, that look off your face. That you're not the reason all of this is happening. Like you're any better than, uh, than uh, him. Uh, uh, Basira said Elias was gone. Oh, gone. Right, yes, yes, he is. He's gone. <laughs> like that makes any difference. I don't understand. No, you don't, do you? He's still alive. You are still alive. So this place is still... Oh, Melanie. <gasps> Melanie, this isn't you. Back off! <laughs> you don't know me. And I don't know you. So stay the hell away from me or I swear... Okay. I will. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. She nearly attacked me, Basira. I mean, I know me and Melanie haven't always seen eye to eye before, but... Oh, Christ! Yeah, I did warn you. She's not, uh... She's not been having a good time. Mmm, yes, I did get that impression. Elias is gone. I thought... I mean, wasn't that supposed to be it? But she is still... It's not that simple. She needs help, Basira. God, it didn't even get that bad with... Even Tim never threatened me. Not like that. Right, just back off. You haven't been here. Oh, okay, you're right. I haven't. So explain it to me. <sighs> All right. Best I can understand it. The holding, or the eye, or whatever you want to call it. We're one of the only powers that hasn't actually taken a shot at a ritual. Yet. And everything out there knows it. No, I mean, we, we can't be the only ones, surely. I don't know. Probably not. But we made a big noise with the unknowing and other stuff, and now they've taken notice. We're safe in here, usually. But we don't go out much anymore. Usually? Yeah. You were attacked. When? About two months ago. It was, uh... It was the flesh. Oh, God. Yeah, it was bad. We took them all out. Melanie did most of them. She was... She got a knife from somewhere and... Sarah, I... I don't know if that's a good sign... She saved my life, John. She saved all of us. I won't forget that. Fine. Fine. Haven't seen Martin about yet. Yeah, he comes and goes. He's busy. Well, he seems it. Working for Peter Lucas. Don't be too hard on him, John. You're a... situation. It hit him. Hard. Yes. Well, I'm sure there are better ways to deal with it than getting cosy with Elias' successor. Who I've yet to meet, by the way. <laughs> yeah, join the club. Sorry, you haven't? Nope. Never seen him. As far as I can tell, Martin's the only one who has. Right. A and you're sure he's... real? We get emails from him. Memos. <laughs> he's been restructuring. Separating out the departments a bit. Not a surprise, I guess, with his pedigree. But if you've never seen him, I mean... <sighs> Rumour is a couple of researchers up on the third floor decided to ignore some of his new directives and... Whoosh. Sorry, what's... Whoosh. Whoosh. 
gone. Oh. <laughs> the more things change. So, we're under siege. Melanie is aggressively unstable. Martin is working very closely with the Lonely, who is predictably enough isolating him. And, oh, yes, uh, Tim and Daisy are still dead. Which is at least easy to keep track of. That isn't funny, John. I know it's not... Sorry. It's just... It's a lot. And we've got an audience. Perfect. I thought you said you decided to throw them all out. Yep. And I did. And here's another one. Maybe it's hungry. Seriously. I mean, I did have a statement I was planning to record. Great. Perfect. You can get on with that, and I'll just leave then. Right. Uh, what do I do if Melanie comes back? I don't know. Play dead. I have no theories on this. No, no sudden insights. I wish I could talk it through with Martin. Or Tim. Or Sasha. But we never really did that, did we? Everything's changed. Two days out of a coma, and I'm already tired. End recording. Simon Fairchild is one of the recurrent figures that I think disquiets me the most. Not simply for what he does, the endless spaces of height or depth to which he is so quick to condemn his victims, but the joy he seems to take in doing so. And I don't think there is much to this tale beyond that, an evil man tormenting and killing simply for his own pleasure and to feed the power that sustains him. In other cases, I might think the location noteworthy might try to piece together some wider plan. But Fairchild seems to travel far and wide for his victims, with no motivation other than variety. I do not think I ever wish to meet him. Of course, even if I did want to do research into the statement, I wouldn't have any help doing so. It's been a week, and... Melanie's attitude towards me hasn't softened, and Basira, though she is very willing to talk, still doesn't seem to trust me enough to let me in on whatever plans she might have. If she has any plans at all, of course. I could make her tell me, I know that, but I can't afford to burn any more bridges. Still no sign of Peter Lucas, of course. Or Mar Wait. Wait. Martin! Martin! Oh. Hi, John. Martin, it's... I, I haven't seen you. Yeah. Sorry. Where, where, have, where have you been? I, I mean, I, I thought... No, 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 I've I've been here. I've just, um, you know, been busy. Busy? Yeah. Right. Working for Lucas. No, P Peter's... Uh, it's complicated. Right. Anyway, I should... Uh, How are you, Martin? Is everything... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm all right. Uh, everything's fine. Right. Um, how's, how's the poetry? Oh, uh, well, I haven't exactly had a lot of time recently, so... Uh, yes, uh, of course. Hmm. You've been busy. Yeah. Look, John, I've really got to go, oh, so... Um... Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, 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 it, it was good. To, it was good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> An Englishman returning from Scotland with a fear of bagpipes and sheep. I'm sure we can all relate. In many ways, the slaughter fascinates me. There seems to be, in all cases, a question at its heart about control. Is it a mindless dance, dragging participants along by the beat of a drum, or 
Is there a kernel of will in there? Lucidity and deliberateness to the random fury and violence. I suppose that's the question with so much of violence. War. How much are you really in command of yourself or of others? I'm not sure what scares me more. The idea that deep down everyone is in complete control of their actions, that everything is on some level intentional. Or that ultimately we don't have any control of ourselves at all. And the rest is just... Rationalization. Another lightener, obviously. Not one I can readily identify, though it sounds like it would now be inert anyway. Given the blank pages, I do wonder whether its destruction was a last-ditch effort to stop its effects, or the exact thing that released its power in such an extreme way. Regardless, I've hit another research dead end with this. It's frustrating, to be honest. I finally feel myself. I feel focused and ready, and I find myself basically alone. I'm now sure Martin is actually avoiding me. Basira was right about the Institute being watched, though. In the last week, I've seen two different people wearing symbols for the People's Church of the Divine Host. And it's rare I go anywhere without cobwebs anymore. I uh, find myself keeping my guard up around mannequins as well. Though I'll admit, that one is more likely to be my own projection. But honestly, it's the internal threats I'm worried about. Peter Lucas is just sitting up there, doing whatever the hell it is he and Elias have planned. And Melanie still has that bullet pumping violence into her, waiting to turn this place into another Lion Craig. I just wish there were... Wait, I, I, I didn't... Did I read that somewhere? Or... R right, yes. <clears throat> the bullet uh, didn't show up on electronic or mechanical scans, but it's still lodged in her leg, just above the tibia. And it's been getting slowly infected ever since. I have to find Becerra. No. But if you're right, I don't see what choice we've got. No, I mean... Oh, yeah, the stuff she takes is pretty strong these days. She should be out for a while. Well, sleep is hard. You've been staying here too. Got a camp bed at the other end, near the tunnels. I like to keep an eye on them. Besides, wanted to give us some space, you know? But, yeah, living outside the Institute is just not safe anymore. What about Martin? I think he's still got a place. He's not down here anyway. Right. So how, how does the... Do you want to get on with this or what? Yes, right. Sorry. Uh, you, uh, you managed to get some anaesthetic. Yeah. The guy said it was a nerve block. It should numb pretty much the whole leg. Right, right. Was it hard to come by? No, I just popped down super drug. Yes, it was hard to come by. You, you couldn't get any general anaesthetic knock her out fully? Oh, sure. Did your spooky brain tell you the right dosage to not kill her? No. No, no, it didn't. Then it's got to be the local. Here, get on with it. What, me? Yeah, if she comes around, she's going to kill someone. And, you know, not it. Fine, give it here. The guy said you'd need to hit the right nerve for it to work. Do you know much about it? Here. Him? You sure? Yes. Okay, go for it. Right. I pray the injection doesn't wake her. Yes, thank you, Basira. You're sure we shouldn't just... tell her? I really don't know how she'd take it. Not well. If we want to get out of her, this is it. Okay. better be right about this. I am. Right, pass me the scissors. What? I thought you had a scalpel. For the trouser leg. Oh, right. God, look at that. I don't. It's 
the leg? No. Inside. I don't know what you're seeing, John. It's... Christ, it's all rotten. Can you see the bullet? Yes. You ready? <laughs> no. You're sure you don't have restraints or... You think she's going to sleep through being tied down? I'll try and grab her if she wakes, but... Okay. Here we go. humanity would have made that seem more acceptable, a sort of sacrifice, but it just makes me sad. I remembered Gertrude's notebook. We found it alongside the plastic explosives, but it rather got lost among the business of saving the world at the cost of two lives. It, it's borderline incomprehensible, not because of any code or cipher, there's every chance I could read those. Just simply because most of it is numbers or fragments of sentences that would no doubt mean something to her, but well, not to me. I've been staring at it for hours in the hopes something from it would just come to me. And it worked well enough to point me towards this statement, which is useful background and perhaps gives some insight into how Gertrude formulated her counter-rituals, but... Not much more. I've been trying to check on Melanie's condition. She refuses to see me. Understandably, I, I suppose, and Basira has been looking after her. It hurts, of course, but... I really hope getting that bullet out of her helps. At least stops it from getting any worse. I can't have been too late again. There was a tape recorder waiting for me when I sat down. They're not even hiding it anymore. There weren't any tapes from when I was... away. I checked. Whatever they are, they are here for me. I suppose I should be worried, but I have so much to keep watch over. So I've decided to let the tapes run. They've proved useful before, so... Oh, hello. Haven't seen you in a while. Really? I mean, it's just admin. It's not exactly thrilling listening. Alright, fine. Whatever. You do you. Spool away, I guess. Just, you know, let me know if you need some more batteries or something. he's back, isn't it? He's back, so now you're going to be around again. Listening in. <laughs> you missed him, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Which isn't a great sign, if I'm being completely honest. You talk to him. I, I, I tried not to. I... I I didn't mean to... You talk to him. And that's understandable, Martin. Of course it is. Please don't think I'm upset. It's just... not ideal. Shows how much work we still have ahead of us. If I keep avoiding him, people will get suspicious. <laughs> They're already suspicious, Martin. That's not the problem. I had hoped that all this time apart would have given you the space you needed, but... You said he'd probably never wake up. And he beat the odds. Which is good, but it does make things more complicated. It doesn't actually change anything. 
A simple hello isn't going to make any difference We've been over this. The sort of power you're going to need relies on your... Obedience. Isolation. It needs to be you, Martin. You're the only one who could possibly balance between the two. But if I could just explain... And how do you think John's going to react to that explanation? Hmm? Do you think he'll accept it calmly? Come through with a well-considered, rational response? That's not fair. Or would he assume he knows better than you and do something rash? I don't like being manipulated. That's fair. But I'm not wrong. No. Martin, this isn't how any of us wanted it to go. But here we are. And if we don't pull this off, it's over for everyone. John included. Yep, you said. But if things are really so urgent, then why didn't Elias say anything? (laughs) Because behind all his bluster, Elias is just like all the rest. He's so preoccupied playing the game, he doesn't pay attention to the big picture. He managed to convince himself that he could get his ritual off first, which would have made all of this a bit moot, but that's not really an option anymore. So it's down to us. You and me. The dynamic duo. And so what? That means I have to trust you? It would make things a lot simpler. Yeah, well, things would also be a lot simpler if you weren't so cryptic about everything. Well, if your archives were a bit better organised, it wouldn't have taken me almost three months to find the evidence you needed. What? I'm just saying that we'd all be better off if your archivist actually knew how to archive. Peter. Yes. Well. Unless I'm mistaken... I believe I've unearthed a few of Decker's old statements. Of course, I still need to do a bit of verification, but I'm confident they should provide you with all the context you need. Good. Great. When all this is over, I'm telling him everything, with or without your permission. Martin, when it's over, you won't want to. Hmm. But he will be safe. They all will. Yeah. Anyway, I'm very excited to see this rotor you've put together. Never had much of a gift for administration myself. Too many variables. Now, this box on the left, that's the library staff, yes? No, no, that's the... Those are the dates. Look, are you sure you don't want me to teach you? It's it's a very simple program. No, no. Can't stand computers. Besides, that's why I have an assistant, isn't it? Uh, Yeah, I guess so. Disconcerting to find my namesake in a statement, especially one connected so directly to the Institute. I can only hope breaking faith with Jonah Magnus didn't go too badly for him. <laughs> Jonah Magnus. I've never really given much thought to him, not nearly as much as I should have. I suppose I had always hoped there was a chance he was innocent in all this. I know, I know, but I had. I just hoped that maybe the founding of the Institute was in earnest, and not simply the foundation stone for all the terrible things that have happened here. But no, whatever is happening now has its origins two hundred years ago, in the work of an evil man. Exactly two hundred years, in fact. Don't think that little detail has evaded me. I don't know the precise date the Institute was founded, but I do know that it was in 1818. Something's coming. I know it is. But I just don't know what I need to do. Come in, Becerra. I was waiting for you to finish. I know. I don't like that you started doing that. I I know. Hmm. How's Melanie? How do you think? I uh, I should probably talk to... You should to probably a... stay as far away as possible. She doesn't want to see you. No, no, uh, of course. Um, she has. But she did want me to apologise oh. from her for the shoulder. Oh, it, it's fine. Scalpel wounds. <laughs> they heal quickly. Hmm. Too quickly, really. Already. Just another scar for the collection. Hmm. 
Do, do you think it worked? Is she... I don't know. She seems more coherent, I guess. And she did get an apology. Yeah. She says she can cry now, which is um, oh. progress, I think. Uh. She's still angry, but she hasn't attacked anyone. Not even sure she has it in her anymore. Well, that's that's good. Hmm. So, you can't be killed by a collapsing building. Major injuries scar up fast. You can force the truth out of people, and knowledge pops into your head whenever you need it. Yes, I, I think that that about covers it. And what was that you were doing yesterday? When? You were sat on the floor for like four hours. Oh, uh, no, I, I was, uh, I was listening. You know, trying to see if any of the statements called to me. And? Brilliant. Look, I don't know, Basira. I hope I'm still human, but it... But it's seeming more and more unlikely. I didn't ask. No, I suppose you didn't. Don't snoop in my head. I'm not snooping. I'm not looking. That's not how this works. Explain it, then. I'm, I'm not sure I can. Humour me. It's hard. It's like there's a, a door in my mind, and behind it is it is the entire ocean. Before, I didn't notice it, but now I, I know it's there, and I can't forget it, and I can feel the pressure of the water on it. I, 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 can, I can keep it closed... But sometimes, when I'm around people, or places, or ideas, a drop or two will push through the cracks at the edges of the door. And I'll... know something. What happens if you open the door? I drown. I'm sorry, Basira. I, I will try to keep anything I learn about you to myself. My priorities haven't changed. I hope you can believe that. I'm still on your side. You can trust me. Yeah. People keep saying that. Do they? Who, who else? Did Martin say something? It was a few months back, after the attack. He'd started spending time with Lucas. At least, he said he was. And I wanted answers. He kept telling me to trust him, to hear the guy out, even though he still wouldn't actually show his face. I told him he could drop me an email or vanish me. Right. Honestly, I kind of regret not just grabbing Martin and shaking an explanation out of him. But I didn't want to push it. He was in a bad place, what with the attack and his mum and everything, so I didn't press it. Now I try and bring it up, he just disappears. Nothing to be done. So, sorry, you said... What happened with his mother? Oh, yeah. She died. About two months after you, uh... Martin was... He tried to stay strong. Keep it together, but that sort of thing. <sighs> then those flesh things burst in, and well, here we are. God. He didn't tell you? No. Hmm. Guess you don't know everything, then. No, I, I guess not. So what do we do now? You tell me. Just don't expect much on trust these days. Yes, I... I suppose that's fair. Good evening, detective. I'm not a detective. Of course. You wanted to see me? Yes. Something too important to tell the inspector. Maybe I just wanted to have a chat. Well, good luck with that. Uh, I found one of these in my cell. It wasn't recording, but I assume this means he's awake. Basira? 
Can we cut the bullshit? What bullshit might that be? The part where you pretend you don't spend your whole time watching us. Sometimes I'm eating. You know he's back. You've seen him. Fine. Yes. So what's with the recorder? Who gave it to you? Oh, no, that, that really did just appear in my cell. Right, so what? You figured you'd record us for him? So some distrust from afar? Our arrangement with the inspector notwithstanding, I rather feel that right now all the distrust is very much your own. And as to whether he'll ever hear this, maybe he'll get the tapes. Maybe he won't, but the recordings have helped so far, so... Do you know what they are? What a question. <sighs> Fine. So you won't see him, but you're happy for him to hear our conversations? He can listen all he wants, but he's at a very delicate stage right now, and I fear my presence would be a, um, a distraction. I've made it clear my cooperation is contingent on his not seeing me, and my terms have been accepted thus far. So why am I here? What do you want that's so important you needed to tell me to my face? I believe you recently lost Melanie. We saved Melanie. As a person, yes. But as a defender, I would have thought you would want all the help you could get. Or have you forgotten what happened last time you let your guard down? We'll work it out. Possibly. Then again, you are beset by enemies on all sides, Sira. And unless you expect John to record them into submission, it would seem you are in rather dire need of another option. And you just happen to have one? I might have an idea, yes. And what does it cost? Just some of your time, Basira. Just your time. <sighs> okay. Let's hear it. Don't say a word. John, don't turn on the light. Go get Melanie, quickly. It's all right, Basira. I know he's here. So what are you doing? I imagine he's here to deliver something. Thought it might need signing for. That's right. Just wanted... to... to drop off a package. Right. Look, what the hell is this? Did you bring him here? No. Is he here for revenge? I don't, I don't know. Ask him. Like he's going to answer me. Fine. Are you here for revenge? <laughs> yeah. Just like when we... when I... Fed the copper to the pit. Easy, Becerra. What pit? In here. Realise that I'm not tied to it anymore. Not on my own. Thought you could have it. Pay your respects like... Daisy's in there. That's his name. Then sure, it's in there. Whatever's left. Find out if you like. Would you please drop that ridiculous voice? Apologies. It's preferred like so. Christ, that's worse. <laughs> what is your real voice? <laughs> Nicholas said you were funny. Didn't believe it. What do you want? Why are you here? <sighs> Why are you here? Dunno. It's not right, on my own. Not right. No point in doing it on my own. Don't know what happens now. Thought I might kill you. Missed my chance. Thought I might just deliver something. So here's a coffin. In case you want... to join your friend. Get out. Sarah. Get out. Make me stop. What are you doing? John, what are you doing? What are you... Stop it. Stop it. No. <clears throat> Enough. Stop looking at me. John? It's fine. Get me a pen. Please. Here. Thank you. Was it worth it? I, I don't know. Maybe. 
Did you at least learn anything? Daisy's alive. In there. Right. Miss Sarah, we, we can't... Uh, yeah, I can read. Right. So why give it to us? I don't... I don't know. To, to taunt us, to lure us in as well. Hmm. I saw that thing's mind. It's lost on its own. No partner, no purpose. I, I honestly think it just wanted to do another delivery. And there's no chance more of the circus survived the explosion? I don't think so. I, at least, Brecon didn't think so. Where does the coffin lead? The buried. Right. Right. Keep it safe. I'll be gone a few days. I have some leads I need to follow up. Sorry? You heard me. Don't ask about them. And don't know about them either. Well, I can't exactly control that. Learn. I'll do my best. You can trust me, Basira. Stop saying that. Do you know how I survived that? The unknowing? I... Uh, no. No, I don't. No powers, no magic or help. I was trapped in that place, and so I tried to figure it out. And I did. A little. So I kept doing it. I kept going through until I got out. I reasoned my way out of that nightmare. Good lord. Then everything ended and Daisy was gone. And you were gone. And Tim. And then I got back to the Institute and Martin sent me to meet the new boss. Then I stood alone in an empty office for more than an hour. I can trust me, John. That's it. I'll try and be back in a week or two. Don't think about me. Right. And don't open the coffin. It is addressed to me. Yes, all right. All right. Martin? John, how did you... I just... Uh, I know sometimes. It's, it's a whole thing. Oh. Okay. Well, uh, sorry, but I... I um... You have to leave, suddenly. John, come on, we've been over this. No, it's fine. I know you've got... Whatever this is, I'm not going to question you. Thank you. Even if it looks like you're doing something really stupid. Sorry. It's okay. I get it. I just... I worry. You're working for someone really bad. Yes, I'm not an idiot, John, but it's no worse than working for something really bad, so... At least the eye hasn't gone after our own. Lucas has vanished two people. Yeah, and if it wasn't for me, it would have been a lot more. This isn't helping anything. I just... I'm sorry. Basira's off doing God knows what and I can't talk to Melanie. Mm-hmm. I suppose. I miss you. I'm just... Lonely. Yeah. I, uh... I heard about your mother. Yeah. I am so sorry. Thank you. It's... It's better this way. If, if you do need to talk, I, I... I can't. No. No, of course. Listen, Martin, you should know. John... Daisy might be alive. Basira Stop. is... Stop, please. I, I shouldn't know any of this. I, you know, I, I really need to go. I, I'm right. Please stop finding me. What happened, Martin? You died. I came back. Yeah. And I'm not going to let it happen again. Wait. Wait, what? One thing that always strikes me when I read statements like this is... the bias of survivorship. With one or two notable exceptions, the only statement the Institute receives are those where the witness has successfully escaped whatever terrible place or being has marked them for a victim. 
I wonder how many don't make it out. How many of those shapes in the water were once just like Mr. Shakya? Hmm. Or perhaps I shouldn't wonder. Even as I say it, I can feel the knowledge pushing at my mind. Eager to find a way in. But I don't want it. I don't want to know. I don't want to see. No more than I wanted to see how Gertrude stopped the buried and their ritual, but that came to me as well. <laughs> they called it the Sunken Sky, and she calculated, correctly, that casting a void-touched body down the pit at the right time would be enough to disrupt it. Something she found in Jan Kilbride. But Gertrude also realised that the body need not be alive or in one piece. She thought it was a mercy. It wasn't. I don't like this. I don't like not being sure what's going to be in my mind, what thoughts are mine and what are from elsewhere. Why I just know some statements are what I should be reading. I assume this one is related to the coffin, to Daisy. I haven't heard from Basira since she left on whatever secret errand, and I feel like I'm no closer to understanding any of this. I suppose if this one managed to free himself from the buried, I, to find a way out of whatever part of Choke embraces drowning... I, I need an anchor. I, I could go in myself. I, I, I could find her. Then I just need to get out. I need something out here. Something I can know the way back to. I don't, I don't know what. But... It's a start. End recording. Do you mind? What? Oh, um, no. Excellent. Why tape recorder? Why not digital? Well, there's nothing wrong with tape. A bit old-fashioned, but I suppose so am I. Right. Uh, yes, that, that's fine. It is all fine. Are you quite ready? Um, will it help? I'm sorry? Telling my story to you, will, will it help with the nightmares? If that's your primary goal, my dear, I would suggest you speak to a qualified counsellor. We can suggest one, if you like. That said, I do believe most people find the process of giving a statement to be rather cathartic. And whatever nightmares your experience has left you with, I'm sure they won't be bothering you much longer. OK, then. So, what do I do? Let's start with your name. Oh, um, Lucia. Lucia Wright. And what is your statement regarding... Just, um, a hole. A hole filled with... Uh, with meat. And do you feel any better? No. Oh, that's a shame. Hang on, let me see if I can find you the number for that counselling service. Uh, they're actually quite good, if you say so. Well... That is a relief. When I heard there had been survivors of the last feast, I was rather concerned that one of them might be able to positively identify me, which could land me in all sorts of trouble. But she doesn't seem to remember me at all. Tom Hahn might be a bit more of a problem, as it looks like he also survived, but I'm hopeful he has been weakened enough by this failure to not be an issue in the near future. Hopefully he'll fade away or burn out, as they tend to when robbed of their purpose. Still, I should keep a watch on him in case of any erratic behaviour that might lead to complications. Also worth watching out for any additional esoteric fallout from the ritual attempt, like that Carlisle boy down in Wandsworth. Decker really came through with the explosives. It almost felt like cheating. 
sad about the loss of history, but Miss Wright didn't seem to think the old Gnostic church got many visitors anyway. I'm honestly impressed she had the strength to get through it, even if she does seem to have been deeply affected by it. Shame about the dreams. I would avoid them if I could. At least we know for sure that these grand rituals can be disrupted by conventional means, though a more nuanced approach will be needed for some of them, I'm sure. Also, I can't rely on having this much lead time. I've had ten years tracking supplicants drawn by the siren call of flesh, watching them gradually stockpiling meat. Very useful in terms of preparation time for derailing the final push, but in future I think I need to get a little bit more proactive. I found this tape tucked in a corner of my desk drawer, covered in cobwebs. I suppose subtlety has gone out the window a bit, and the question is now simply how much I trust the spider to have my best interest to heart. Hm. I suspect my assuming it has a heart might be a clue I'm looking at this the wrong way. Even so, and leaving aside the matter of Gertrude's actions for a moment, what is it trying to tell me with this? Is it about rituals? About getting Daisy back? About... about an anchor? What was it she said? The siren call of flesh? Hmm. It's possible, I suppose. It would hurt, but... Well, what's another scar? It's been two weeks since I heard from Basira. I'm not waiting any longer. I'm getting Daisy back. End recording. Archivist, but when he actually needs it. <clears throat> what are you doing? Oh, oh, uh, Melanie, I, I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, I didn't know you were there. What are you doing? I'm. Uh, would you believe I'm trying to save Daisy? With more bullshit surgery. Oh, I, Melanie, I, I, I'm so sorry. Oh, I, fuck off! I was trying to save your life. Yes. Well, you did, I think. But I also, you know, see your face now when I wake up screaming. I feel you digging into my leg. Chalk it up as a win for Team Archive, I guess. I wanted to ask you. And if you had, we wouldn't be talking right now. I'd have said no, and I'd probably have hurt you. But Sarah was right. The only way to do it was to completely betray my trust and destroy any remaining sense of safety. So, yes. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm surprised you can stand to see either of us. Who else is there? I mean, Basira is... <laughs> she's been the only one for a long time, and... Yes, I sort of maybe hate her now. I don't know. I can't look at her without my leg hurting, but what else am I going to do? I don't want to be on my own, and I'm stuck here, so... Basira said you were doing better. Would you just stop? No. This isn't right, no, better. I... I'm not yeah, M Melanie, dying, just... and I don't want to kill you. It's, it's, it's just different. Yes, it's sort of better... Maybe, but I, I can't... M Melanie... It, Don't it, tell me to calm down. Don't you dare. Right. Yes. I... 
Basira is, um... Basira deals in intel these days, in usable data, assets, not feelings, not people. Crying, shaking, nightmares, that is better. It doesn't feel like it, but as far as Basira sees it, I'm not compromised anymore. And that is better. Um, at least it's out. Maybe maybe it's enough to start healing, to start letting go of the anger. Oh, just stop! Just stop and listen! Okay. Yes, the, the bullet was bad, right? But it didn't make me angry. Anger is... Anger's been all I've had for a very long time. Years. Maybe since. Oh, I don't I don't know, but everything I've done, everything I've pushed for was because I was angry. Angry at being passed over, being disrespected, ignored. That sort of anger, it, it powers you. Right until it slips out and hurts someone. I hurt someone and then one day I suddenly have this thing that takes all that rage and it holds it tells me it's right that it's me it didn't stay in my leg because of some ghostly master plan it stayed because I wanted it shit yes Melanie, I... So, why are you trying to chop off your finger? Oh, uh, I am... I, um, <clears throat> I, I need a... I've been thinking of it as a, a, an anchor, I, I think. I... No. Something I have a connection to that, that I can use to find my way out of the coffin when I reach Daisy. I, I figured the strongest anchor would be part of my own body. <laughs> okay, so... Just cut it off. I'm doing my best. Hmm. <laughs> Can't go through with it. Oh, the, the blade keeps going in, and... It hurts. It hurts plenty. But then it heals up. Pretty much the moment I take it out. No wound, no scar. Nothing. I could try. I don't think that would be a good idea right now. Maybe not. I mean, you'd think I'd have a better idea how to do it, all these... all these statements, and... <laughs> you know who I need? I need the bone turner. Just reach in and grab a rib. Job done. What? Melanie? Come with me. I was down here just yesterday, and there wasn't... Here. Oh. This, this door, uh, it shouldn't be here. Yes. I, uh, I don't want to open it. I'm not going to. <sighs> She's been helping it us. It has never helped anyone. Not without a cost. If I am an it, Arkvest, then what does that make you? Hi, Helen. I have been told that you can help. I have been trying to, but the last time you were very rude. And you're still wearing her face. Not this again. I'm not wearing anything, Archivist. I am at least as much Helen Richardson as you are the Jonathan Sims that first joined this institute. Things change. People change. It happens. We're not people, though, are we? Not anymore. Names, categories. It's all so important to you, isn't it? You do know none of it's actually real. It's all just meaningless boxes. Is he still in there? Oh, yes. He's not exactly something I can digest. He's a bit of an irritant, to be honest. If you're looking to let him out, I could be persuaded. When did you say they attacked? Uh couple of months ago. And he's been in there ever since. I helped clean up. After I uh, took care of things. All this time? Why didn't anyone tell me? 
Basira said not to. I see. Why didn't you kill him? I stabbed him in three different hearts. Didn't work. If you want to go hunting for a fourth, knock yourself out. I, uh, I'm all right, I think. So, what's the plan? Right. I go in. I offer freedom if he helps. Then I hope he doesn't kill me. If he tries anything... I would suggest running. <laughs> Try to find a door. Naturally. <sighs> oh, uh, uh... Pass the recorder? Seriously? Fine. Right. in and kill me. What, what, what guarantees do, do I have? Guarantees? None. But I want to leave more than I want to kill you. Not like it was my idea in the first place. So... Why did you and the others attack us? I was asked. You want my statement? That's gonna cost you another rib. I could just pull the information out of you. You could try. Okay. Fine. A rib for me. A rib for you. Your freedom and a statement. Yeah. Right. Right. The statement first. Boy. Uh. I see that. Do you want to do this all, Walter? That's it. Hardly worth a rib. All right. All right. Is it, uh... Is it going to hurt? To know. Not hurt me. I 
suppose it is. You said I could leave. Y yes, just uh, and if you start walking that way, I I'm sure there'll be a door for you. That better be. Y yes, I. I, uh, I Still alive? Seems to be, yes. And he's certainly holding a bone, for some reason. Said it was going to be an anchor. Hmm. Bodies are strange. Rather glad they're not my concern anymore. Must be nice. It really is. Did you let that thing go? He found a door. Where did he come out? The door may have been in a wall some distance above a river. <laughs> nice. Is it, um... All done. Right. Uh, mm, thank you. For your, uh, for your help. You are very welcome. I have decided that I support what you're doing, and I'm happy to assist. I think we'll all be much happier this way. Basira's not going to be happy that you let him out. Basira isn't here. And if this works, I'll have Daisy waiting for her when she gets back, so I don't think she'll be thinking too much about Jared. You're going now? <laughs> uh, no. No, now I am going for a lie down. That was... That was not what I expected. Come on. You can use Basira's cot. Good luck, archivist. Be seeing you. Right. It was a coffin. An old wooden coffin. Rough, unvarnished. I could see splinters where the nails had been hammered in badly. Wrapped all around it was a thick metal chain ending in a heavy padlock. That weird moaning was coming from inside it. It was the only sound that cut through pounding rain. Hello, Melanie. I know I said we'd wait until Basira was back, but, but I, I don't... I'm sorry. I, I, I know she won't... She'd want to do it a different way. But I know what I'm doing. This time, I do. I hope. I have her voice. I think that should be enough to find her, and, and I'm leaving my... I'll leave it with the tape. I should be able to find my way back to it. I think. Wish me luck. Although, I suppose if you're hearing this, then I... I didn't have any. I don't know. I'm... I'm scared. <laughs> when does the fear go away? A anyway, I I'm sorry. You too, Basira, if you're hearing this. I know you'd stop me. You'd be right to, but... But if this goes wrong, all you lose is... I'm not risking anyone else. And I know... I think I can get her out. Right. And you're coming with me. Let's do this one properly. No need for that. I'm willing. Stone steps, roughly hewn. They... They keep going. Well, no point waiting. I'm 
not sure how long it's been. The steps ended eventually. There's passages, but it's very, uh, it's close. I'm having some trouble, but I'm going the right way. I know it. I just, I just need to keep moving. When I stop, it, it starts to repress on me. Just to keep going. I can't stand anymore. It's, it's not a passage. Not anymore. It's a tunnel. Barely that. But I'm, I'm definitely getting closer. If I could just... <laughs> My torch is broken. I didn't even drop it. It got caught against the wall and crushed. God, I don't even know how long I've been here. I heard someone. He was begging for me to save him. He said he couldn't breathe. I can barely breathe. I couldn't find him. But I am not here for him. I don't even know him. I can't, I can't see anything here. For all this, this place closes around me. I, I feel adrift. Like nothing can get through the dirt and the muck. And I still have Daisy's tape and I still think I'm going the right way. When I move at all, feels like every inch costs me another scrape or bruise. I'd hoped I was beyond that, but apparently not. The air is heavy. Soil and dust. I am very thirsty. I know I won't die of it. I won't die of anything down here. Not ever. Not if I can't find my way out. When I first came down, I could feel it. The, the part of myself I left outside, but, but it's been getting fainter. And now I'm trying not to think about it. Don't don't want to stretch my mind to try and see in case it's not there at all. I can't afford to think about it. Not now. I, I think... Oh God. I... I... I think I'm... I'm stuck. Daisy, can you reach me? I can't. I can't see you. Follow my voice. Is that... I... I can't... Uh, you, you're real. You're real. Yes. I'm here, Daisy. Daisy. Yeah. Daisy. That's me. Are you alright? I, I can't move, I, I can't, and I can't breathe, and... Uh, oh God. Just alone, I, I think, I think 
I hear others sometimes singing when it's when it's wet or or scratching, trying to get out. But I don't. I don't. I don't think there's there's anyone there. It's just just me. Till now. Are you? Are you okay? No. Sorry. Obviously. No, I just meant. You sound okay. Do I? I thought you might have been taken over by the hunt. What? The, the hunt. You're a hunter. Yeah, I guess I was, but not here. No. No. I, I can't feel my blood. I can always feel it. I can't, can't reach me here. Where are we? The coffin. We're in the coffin. It, it leads to... Well, it's got a lot of names. Choke. The buried. Uh, too close, I cannot breathe. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds, sounds right. Come on. Let's get you out of here. Can't, can't move. And even if I, if I could, there's no way out. It's okay. I've, uh, I've got a plan. Is this like all your other plans? It's fine, I just... I just need to... to find it. What? Come on. Come on, where are you? John? Come on. John? I know. The, the way out? No. I know where we are. There isn't no out, not here. This is... This is forever deep below creation. Where the weight of existence bears down. This is the buried, and we... are alive. There isn't even an up. Oh, God. What have I done? Not alone, though. No. No, not alone. John? Still here. Good, I... Good. I want to talk. Okay. Um. What do you want to talk about? Don't. I. I don't care. I. I. I just. I just want someone to hear me. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Daisy. I. I want to. But it's. Difficult. Would it help if I ask? Yeah, yes. All right. Do your thing. Right. Um, <clears throat> uh, how are you feeling? Uh, scared. I, I, I'm, I'm scared. I've been scared the whole time here. Not just when it when it's cr crushing, when it f fills your your mouth with with dirt. 
It, it knows when to stop. When to ease back so you don't... don't lose it or, or grow numb. It leaves you terrified for when it starts again and when it does, you're, you're scared a lot. Never, never stop. I thought, thought I'd, I'd never, never see the sky again. Never, never see, see Basira. But, 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 but now, you, you've got out of, of, of other stuff like this. Maybe, maybe you'll get out of this and. And I'll take me with, with you. But, but I don't know what I'll be out, outside. The, the... The hunt... It can't reach me here. I'm sc scared, but... <clears throat> but I... I feel more... feel more me than I have for years. Maybe all my life. The hunt was me. But I don't I don't think I liked it. I think it just made me need it. I hurt a lot of people and some who who I shouldn't have <laughs> did you ever hear the, the story Elias told me about what I did how I am he didn't get a detail wrong the hunt Hunger was in me all my life, telling me who to chase and how to hurt them. I never needed to think who I was outside of that, but down here, where I, I can't hear the blood anymore. I, I don't. I don't know who I am without without the chase. I just know that I I don't like who I was back outside. I don't want to be her again. I want to be better. You know what I thought when I woke up here? I thought this was hell. I, w I was dead and was in hell. And I, <laughs> I... I knew I deserved it. I don't want to be a sadistic predator again. I don't want to hobble around like some pathetic, wounded prey, either. I don't know which would be worse. I'm scared now that I won't ever get the choice. One thing I've learned today, Z, is that we all get a choice. Even if it doesn't feel like one. I was going to kill you. You know that, right? <laughs> I mean, I definitely got that impression when you dragged me into the woods for an execution. <laughs> no, no, no. After the mission, I was planning to kill you. I... I did not know that. I realised you were in my dreams. 
reliving the, this, the, the coffin. You were there. Yes. Didn't think it was real. Not really. Just my mind putting you there because I hated you, but no. One night, you turn up in a new shirt. <laughs> Didn't fit you. Not your style. I didn't think much of it, but just a, a dream. And you come back from the States and guess what you were wearing? Oh. Realised what was happening then. Realised you weren't human. <sighs> Needed to die as soon as it was safe. Never mind Elias and his insurance. And now? Don't know. I, I miss dreaming. You don't sleep down here. Daisy, you should know I'm... If I wasn't human before, I'm, uh... I'm even less now. Yeah, well... At the moment, I don't care. <laughs> and if we get out? But we can't get out. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, John. I'm sorry. Daisy. Uh, I'm, I'm here. I, I can... It's, it, it's closer. What is? Not my, my, my anchor, my... A, a, a rib, I can... I can feel... I know the way. Yeah. What? Uh, how? I don't... It's like... Uh, my, my link is... It's stronger. No. <laughs> Slow down. I, I can't. Don't let go. Come on. We're close. This way. Here. Here. Come on. Push. I... I am... We're out. We're, we're really out. I can't believe. Um, what? What is it? Tape recorders. There must, must be dozens of them. John, you stupid idiot. What did you think? Hi. Oh my god. You sure? No, uh, it's um, it's fine. It's just Basir is busy. No, I, I understand. O honestly. Uh, I'd actually appreciate your insight uh, for this one. Just, I mean, you know, keep quiet during the statement and that. Sure, I, I can do quiet. Right. Uh, oh, do you want a chair? No. Oh, okay. I'm trying to get my legs right again. Oh, of course. Just ignore me. I'll, I'll stand in the corner. Okay, then. What do you make of that, then? I don't know. Why? Oh, well, you're, uh, you're a hunter, right? Mm. Well, I just wondered. I've been looking for evidence of uh, a hunt ritual uh, to see if it was one of the ones Gertrude stopped. And this is the closest thing I've been able to find. Could have been one, I think. But it didn't work. I don't even know how it was meant to work. No. But why? There was no outside interference. No other powers, even the indigenous tribes who could theoretically have derailed it, seemed to stay away. So why didn't it work? I don't think it was about that. I'm not sure I understand. Just a feeling. When I was... You know what my least favourite part of a case was? Police brutality lawsuit? <laughs> Arresting them. I hated the handcuffs. The, the click. It meant the chase was done, the hunt was over. 
satisfying on a good day, sure, but Moorish. I never really wanted it to be over. Hmm. You don't think the hunt would let its ritual end? You don't think it would let them find the culmination? I don't know. Maybe? Sometimes I lost perps because I let myself get too into it. Gave them openings just because I wanted to keep chasing. Like with you. Sometimes it meant I'd lost them. Uh, one of the bits I've managed to decode from Gertrude's notes, it references something she calls the uh, the ever chase. You think that might be it? The, the ritual that never ends because the hunt is all in the pursuit? I don't know. You're the expert. No, no, I, I like it. It's, it's a good theory. Basira said you could just know all this now anyway. Yeah, it's... I can't really control it. Oh. Hey, there you are. You're meant to be doing your exercises. You were out. You could have done them alone. Sure. Everything all right? Yeah. Daisy, could you give us a minute? Oh. Should I... Yeah, please. Sure. Sure. Are you... John, is that her? What? You've had people switch before, right? Replaced. I mean, sh sure, but... How sure are you that's the real Daisy? Uh, I I'm sure. But Sarah, that that's her. But do you... Do you know? Yes. Why? Hmm. Talk to me, Basira. Is she wrong in some way? No. No, she still sounds like her. Says things Daisy would say, laughs like her. She just seems... lost. I want it to be her. Do you? What's that supposed to mean? She's trying to keep a clear head. Stay away from the hunt as much as possible. You valued her purpose. Her resolve. The sort of things... I get it. It's her. We've all changed, Basira. Yeah, I just... I didn't realise she'd changed into someone who can't look after herself. Even without the muscle atrophy. You were hoping for a defender. I was hoping for someone I can trust to share the load. Because right now it's all on me. It doesn't have to be. Hmm. You're not happy she's back. I didn't say that, John. I will never abandon Daisy, and having her back is... But right now she's dead weight, and I need to be able to travel light. You're starting to sound like Gertrude. Good. Far as I can see, Gertrude Robinson was the most effective person in this place. That's what Tim said as well. Look, I've been where you are. Have you? Yes, I have. Like, you're the only one responsible for everyone, the weight of all their lives on your shoulders. It leads to bad decisions. Yeah, well, when I get myself kidnapped three times in a row, maybe I'll look to you for advice. Bad decisions, like wasting three weeks chasing dead ends and false leads, rather than talking to us about the plan. I told you not to look in my head. I didn't. This one's just me. You've not mentioned anything about where you were, avoided talking about what you might have learned, and that file that you were studying clippings from, empty. Maybe I found something and I'm not sharing. You didn't, though, did you? I had good intelligence. Which you charged off to investigate without telling anyone. You know who that reminds me of? Drop it. Fine. I don't care if you trust me, but I think I've proven at the very least that I'm useful. So use me. Because if you go it alone, you are going to die. Even Gertrude worked with people. We make bad decisions when we don't communicate. <sighs> you literally jumped into a spooky coffin without telling anybody. Case in point. <sighs> okay. And give Daisy a break. She was there eight months. I was only in there for three days and... Yeah, I know. I just... What? Nothing. I've got work to do. <sighs> so 
So that's it, is it? It is. A new power? The extinction, yes. So, so what, you're afraid of the competition? Not at all. Honestly, that's the sort of thing I normally relish. I've always been a little bit of a gambler, and the higher the stakes, the better. So, so this is... what? This is different. I'm listening. Good. It's about time. (laughs) There are two powers that, to my knowledge, have never attempted to fully manifest. Never had followers set them up for a ritual. Mother of Puppets and Terminus. The Web and The End. The Web? I've never really been sure about. If I were to guess, I would say it actually prefers the world as is, playing everyone against each other, and so on. The End, on the other hand. The End doesn't really need one. It knows that it gets everything eventually, so why bother? The End manifesting would not be a new world of terror. It would be a lifeless world, devoid of everything. Including fear. Exactly. It has no reason to truly attempt to enter our world. It's passive. But the extinction... The extinction is different. It's active. It will seek to create a lifeless world in a way that none of the other powers ever would. Some interpretations suggest it might replace us with something new that can then fear annihilation in turn. But I, and those like me, would rather that did not happen. So so what? You, you want to stop it being born? I don't know if such a thing is even possible. But if it is, then yes. Or at the very least, weaken it. Okay. Okay, so, so let's say for now that I believe you, hypothetically. What, what does this have to do with me? I'm still working out some of the kinks, but I believe I have a plan. However, it requires this place, and it requires someone touched by the beholding. Elias was, perhaps unsurprisingly, unwilling to help. And you thought that since I'm so lonely already, I'd be ideal. Yes. You see, the thing is, Peter, I'm still not all that keen on being part of any ritual you set up. You know, in fact, if I were to be blunt, I'd say that it would be suicidally stupid. Martin, it's going to be decades, if not centuries, before I get another chance to bring Forsaken into this world. Your last archivist saw to that. Honestly, if Elias hadn't killed that woman, I'd have been very tempted. I warned him she was a danger, but Peter, he's always... Peter! Anyway, the point is that, yes, obviously, if I last that long, I'm going to try again. But I'm rather keen for the world not to end in the meantime. Hmm. Martin, this is what we agreed. After the flesh attacked, you came to me. And I've held up my end of the bargain despite your continued hesitation. Your friends have been largely untroubled by the many, many enemies that they have made. What about the delivery guy? Breakin. And the coffin. Was that its name? To be honest with you, I thought it was dead. You thought wrong. True enough. And as soon as I learned it was here, I moved to intervene. But, well, it turns out I wasn't really needed. And as far as the coffin goes, there's not much I can do about a bull-headed archivist who seems hell-bent on self-destruction. My powers only extend so far. Mm Mm-hmm. Look, I'm not going to pressure you into doing anything you don't want to. It won't even work unless you're willing to commit. In any case, I have plenty of preparations to work on myself before it's ready. I'll see what else I can find to help with your reservations in the meantime, okay? Just don't hesitate too long. We are on a deadline after all. Fine. Right, then if you'll excuse me, I have a family thing to get to. Are we going to talk about John? Do we need to? I... Because, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what's been going on with him these past couple of weeks. Oh, oh, yeah, sure. Martin, my patron, hopefully our patron someday, doesn't give me any sort of special insights. I'm not quite the accomplished voyeur that Elias was. I have to keep tabs on things the old-fashioned way. Not turning invisible and eavesdropping? If you like, but I'm only one person and I can't keep an eye on everything. Or anything, apparently. As I said, one of the last shreds of the circus delivered a gateway into too close I cannot breathe. I went to help, but was too late. Then your detective friend left on one of Elias' wild goose chases. 
Then John willfully hurled himself into the coffin. I did not intervene, because thankfully, I did not agree to protect your friends from their own idiocy. Though actually, he gave it more consideration than I thought he would. He's not a moron. If you say so. Regardless, he's in there three days, and then what do you know? He manages to pull himself out of the coffin like a grubby Jesus. And he even brings a penitent thief along in the form of your pet murderer. Does this seem about right to you so far? Yeah. Now, from my point of view, so far, none of this has been any of my business. We have bigger concerns than this little soap opera you call an archive. <laughs> what does puzzle me, though, and I mean that genuinely, is why you were piling tape recorders onto the coffin while John was in there. It's a question, Martin. It's, it's not an accusation. I don't know. And I just felt like it might help. He's always recording. I thought it, it might help him find his way out. Interesting. Were you compelled? I don't know. Maybe. I, I definitely wanted to do it. But? I'm, I'm not sure where the idea came from. You should watch out for that. Could be something dangerous. Sure. I can't help but notice you're recording right now. It was a statement, right? That's what we do. Anyway, point is, I'm not your captor or your torturer. I'm not going to tell you to stop talking to him, or even saving him if it comes to it. If that's not a decision you're willing to make yourself, me scolding you isn't going to help. You know what the stakes are now, and I just have to hope you're with me on this, focusing on the big picture. Yeah. Okay, now I really am running late, so if you don't mind... Well, that's... concerning. I mean, the sun's still there, so I assume they failed. Unless they're still waiting to attempt it. That's not the sort of statement you give four years before you try to, actually. Or is it? The time frames on these uh, attempts, the, these rituals, well, they seem variable, to say the least. When I try to think about it... Uh, It's just darkness. Unhelpful, but not unexpected. I'll keep digging. If there is another ritual upcoming, I'll need all the information I can get on it. I can't believe Gertrude didn't have a plan for it. I hope I'm just being overcautious that it's already long since dealt with, but we'll see. At least the coffin's gone. I gave Artifact Storage some very specific instructions and they've got it solidly sealed away. Is locking it up the right thing to do? There are other people in there. And Daisy and I got out, but... No, I... I can't think about that. Even if I could somehow be sure of recreating our escape, I, I can't save everyone that's been taken. It, it's not my job to try. I... I can't spend another three days in there. I just... I need to let it go. I don't like interacting with the rest of the Institute these days. The way they look at me, I... I don't know. I don't know what they've heard, what the rumours going around are, but they have definitely heard something. And they can't wait until they don't have to talk to me anymore. Can't honestly say I blame them. None of this is easy. Everyone just trying to get through as best they can. Living one day at a time. But I can't afford to be just living one day at a time. I need a plan. But I don't even know what I'm trying to achieve. And no one... No one wants to tell me. Hm. End recording. Nice to see you again, detective. Still not a detective. Never was. Oh, but everyone else seems to be getting a title these days. Uh, why shouldn't you? Cut the shit. What are you playing at? I'm sure I don't know what you mean. Like hell you don't. 
Every lead, a dead end. Every contact, vanished or dead. I spent three weeks bouncing all over the globe on your bad intel because you said there was a way to bring Daisy back. There was. It required you to be absent. You wanted him to go in there. And you would never have allowed it had you been present. Why? Would you simply believe I wanted you and Daisy reunited? No. Fine. Consider it a test. Things are coming. Things that will need John to be far stronger and more willing to use his connection to our patron. His performance during the unknowing was... disappointing. I needed a way to force him to harness his ability more acutely than he had before. The coffin was a useful tool. Daisy an adequate bait. Then you messed up. Where he tells it, he doesn't know how he got out of there. But he did. And his powers were no small part of it. Even if he required some assistance, they were what saved him. And he has still achieved what no one, mortal, monster, or anything in between, has ever been able to. He climbed out of the buried. But what's the point? You aren't getting your ritual off from in here, so what do you need him for? What's so important you need him stronger? I have been observing a recent increase in people and supplies being moved to the small town of Neolicent in Svalbard. An increase which I believe may be linked to a rather desperate attempt by the People's Church of the Divine Host to perform a crude ritual of their own. To bring their... Mr. Pitch into the world. The People's Church? But I thought... You thought the final death of Maxwell Rayner might have sufficiently derailed them? Yes, that was my hope too, but alas, it would seem not. Maxwell, you, you called in that tip, sent us out to their warehouse. And now I'm sending you out again. And why the hell should I trust you this time? I rather feel the real shame would be letting the entire world fall into darkness because of a single person's wounded pride. Detective. The stakes are far too high for that kind of indulgence. So what are they doing? I don't know the details. Neolicent is a stronghold of the dark, meaning I can't see inside. I believe they call it the Extinguished Sun, though that's as much as I know. If Gertrude had a plan for this one, I haven't found it, which is why John needs to be closer to the eye. If anyone can stop what's happening, he can. See through the darkness, etc. And after all this, you want me to just take it on faith and ferry John up to Norway? Have you ever seen the Aurora Borealis? It's lovely this time of year. It would be a shame to lose them. Feel free to do your own research to confirm what I'm telling you. Just don't take too long. If you're lying about this... You'll kill me? I can hardly wait. Good luck, detective. Uh, not really. I was just going to record a statement. Why? Well, Daisy's been, um... I've been keeping her company uh, while... While Basira's busy, she's... Oh, um, no, I, uh, I I know. Well, I've kind of got to... Uh, I've got somewhere to be. Do you mind if if she hangs around with... Uh, I suppose... Not at all. She's very welcome. Great. If you don't mind me asking, where are you off to? Therapy. Wait. Oh, oh God, Melanie, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... It's fine. I would probably have told you eventually anyway. Even so, I shouldn't have... Just I... forget it. It's good, though. I, I'm glad you're getting help. Yes, well, we'll see. There's a, a lot of crap therapists out there. I guess. Still, it, it is a good step. I suppose. You going to tell them the truth? I don't know. It's all a bit... You know? Uh, can we drop it? Of course. Um, yeah, he's, he's fine with it. So... All right. Yeah, uh, are you okay? Yeah. Right, uh, anyway, I'm... I'm running late, so, uh, thank you. Any time. You all right? Asked me that already. Right. Sorry. I didn't ask her to do that. It's fine. You're not babysitting me, all right? 
I know that's what the others think sometimes, but that's not it. I just don't like being on my own if I can help it. You know, flashbacks, panic attacks, the usual. Just trying to avoid it if I can. I know, Daisy. I, I do. It's hard. Yeah, well, don't let me get in your way. Of course. Huh. Neil Ligorio. You ever see any of his work? No, not really into films. Oh, they were... Well, let's just say it's not a complete shock. That was something unnatural to them. Didn't know we had copies in the Institute, though. Let alone original cuts. <laughs> Records indicate they ended up in artefact storage. Probably best they stay there. Yeah. Yes, of course. Annabelle Kane, though. She worries me. I... I don't know. This is the second time she's turned up, uh, peripheral to the Institute? That you know of. Meaning what? <laughs> she's web. Spider sneaky like that. Like that lighter you're always using. Where'd you get that? Mm, good point. We should keep our eyes open. Anyway, how's Basira doing? I haven't seen her much since... Well, she seemed a bit tense the last few times we spoke. How are you guys doing? <clears throat> no, Basira, she's... She's been good. We're together, so it's good. She didn't keep treating me like a china doll. But it's all right. It's understandable, I suppose. Yeah, well, what do you think? You think I'm weak just because I'm not already chasing the next kill? You think I'm less me? I... I don't feel like I'm exactly in the best place to judge the intersection between free will and humanity. Still trying to figure that out myself. John, when you went in the coffin, was it you choosing to do that? Did you actually think you could save me, or was that something telling you to do it? It was me. I was drawn to it, I'll admit, but it, it was my decision. It wasn't entirely about you, though. What was it? My... My memories of the coma are not clear. But I know I made a choice. I made a choice to become... something else. Because I was afraid to die. But ever since then... I... I don't know if I made the right decision. I I'm stronger now, tougher, I can... If I do die now, or get sealed away somewhere forever, I don't know if that's a bad thing. And I don't want to lose anyone else, so if I can maybe stop that happening, and the only danger is to me, I'll do it in a heartbeat. Worst case scenario, the universe loses another monster. That's messed up. Yeah, I suppose it is. Did you know the coffin wouldn't kill you? I guess I thought imprisonment wouldn't wouldn't be as bad as it was. And it's a lot easier to make that choice than it is to actually endure the result. You might have noticed when I was in there with you, I, I had regrets. Yeah, I remember. Plus I thought... Well, I didn't know what being down there had done to you. You thought I was going to kill you? It was a possibility. Guess so. Daisy. Hmm? It, um... Hmm. It's a weird question, but... I... I haven't seen you in my dreams the last couple of weeks. Uh, oh, uh, no. I... I work here now. I feel it seemed to protect the others, so... Oh. Right, so... Wait, did you talk to Lucas, or...? <laughs> Broke into Elias's old office, found an employment contract, filled it in, and signed it. And that worked? Seems so. And you're not worried about... Basir is trapped here. So are you. I'm like I'm going anywhere anyway. I suppose not. So, no more dreams. Not of you and your weird eyes. Just the coffin. Is that better? It's mine. You need to stop moping. I what? You need to stop swanning around, being all sad. I'm, I'm not swanning around. Ooh, I'm so alone and a monster. I am alone. Martin Busy is... Busy doing paperwork. Not like he's dead. Besides, he's not the only other person here, you know. There's me, 
Melanie Basira. Traumatised, traumatised and paranoid because of me. Get over yourself. You're always talking about choices. We all made ours. Now we're making a choice to get some drinks in. Come in. I don't. I... Yeah. Okay. Melanie's out, but I'll go get Basira. Is she... Would she want to join us? If she doesn't, I'll rip her throat out. Uh... It's a joke, John. Oh. <laughs> yes. I- I'll get my coat. Right, have a seat. Do you mind if I record our sessions? I do mind, yes. Ah, I mean, it's just for my own notes. I categorically and completely do not give consent for you to make any recording of me, ever. Turn it off. Please. I... I see. Yes, of, of course. Final comments. Well, that's quite a relief. Nearly 40 years I've been wondering about the slaughter's ritual, keeping an eye out for anything that might be stirring. And it turns out I needn't have been worried at all. The Risen War failed a few years before I was even born. I should have known, I suppose. Few wars in my lifetime have reached anywhere near the heights of fear I suspect this ritual would need, though I did spend some time a while back looking over some details from the Cuban Missile Crisis to (laughs) no avail. In all this time, the answer was just sitting in the archives of the Songling Centre. Funny how that works, sometimes. An interesting set of trappings for this one. The Opium War history of the Nemesis, uniforms linking no doubt to horrific crimes from every imperial nation, all placed in the bloody heart of the Pacific Theatre, and Japanese POWs. Something to do with attitude towards surrender and atrocity in Japan at the time? The Senjin Kung military code? (laughs) Not my place to speculate, I suppose. Still, the anti-climax is fascinating. I can only assume they were supposed to be bombed at the height of the ritual. Maybe by Japanese aircraft? Maybe allied? Maybe both? I wonder what stopped it. A Japanese radar filled with spider webs. A US destroyer finding itself suddenly alone in the open ocean. <laughs> we'll probably never know. <laughs> I suppose. Ah, if any of them survived the resinking of the Nemesis, God, they must have been kicking themselves in 1945. If they just had a bit more patience, waited a few years. Sailed her into Nagasaki Harbour instead. Still, none of us can tell the future, can we? So, that's nice. Another one to cross off the list. Doesn't help with the unknowing, though. (sighs) We still have Decker's backup plan, of course, but it's very risky. To be sure, I think the detonation would need to happen from within the unknowing while it was going on. Gerard may have a connection to the eye, but I'm not convinced it will be enough. And I will admit I've grown fond of the boy. I wonder if I told him about Eric, whether he'd follow in his father's footsteps. Still, it's not like it kept Eric safe in the end. Anyway, point is, you can probably discount the slaughter. It had its chance. So, funny story. Turns out when Daisy broke the lock to get into Elias' old office, well, she did a good enough job that it's not obviously broken. So it hasn't been replaced yet. So I had a look around. Mostly as I remember, but there's a box of tapes and statements in the corner. Obviously those Elias either didn't feel he could trust me with yet, or maybe just the ones he was checking himself. Ideally I'd like to avoid tipping Peter off for as long as possible that I have access. And it turns out I don't know Elias's safe combination. Not yet, anyway. 
So I just took the first one that called to me, and it's... It's good, I suppose. Glad to know I don't need to worry about a slaughter ritual. Nice to get confirmation that whoever Eric was, he was Jerry's father, and, well, one assumes Mary Key's partner. But nothing with any direction to it. Ever since I crawled out of that damn coffin, I feel like I've been... adrift. Filling in blanks and diving into history, but only... The breadcrumbs I'm finding are... Stale. Old. What the hell is the Watcher's Crown? So far, the only mention of it I've had is from Jerry, and he didn't seem to know much about what it actually meant. And he's gone now. But if it is the grand ritual of beholding, then I... I mean... I need to know about it. Right? I feel like I'm on a deadline. Like I'm running out of time somehow. And I don't even know where to go. What to look for, or... Just casting around blindly for more clues to just drop into my lap. Everyone else is running towards something or running away, and I... I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just tired. I think I might go lie down for a while. Get a cup of tea. <laughs> Daisy's got me listening to The Archers. I hate it. But it feels nice to hate something that can't hurt me. <laughs> I don't know. That's it, I, I guess. End recording. There. Much better. You know, I don't care if John hears this. Come on, Martin. It's been so long since I've seen you. Let's not start with lies. <sighs> Fine. I am so very pleased to see you. Mm-hmm. No time for pleasantries? Very well, then. To business. What can I do for you? Tired of running budgets for Peter? I know I would be. I, I need to... <laughs> Is he telling the truth? About what? Any of it. Everything Peter has told you is true. Oh. For all his many faults, Peter is legitimately trying to stop the end of the world as we know it. So why haven't you helped him? My relationship to the apocalypse is more complicated. Oh, seriously? Seriously. Anyway, I have helped him. I've given him control of the Institute. I've provided him with... Me? Any manpower he might require. Yeah, but if, if he's right about the extinction, what it is, then why didn't you say anything before? Why am I only hearing about this now, and why doesn't John know? In my case, while Peter has talked of it before, it is only very recently that I've been forced to admit the extinction is real. And as for our dear archivist, I'm afraid I no longer have any real control over what he does or does not know. Unlike yourself. I notice you haven't told him either. Yeah, well... I'm still not sure I really believe it. And I don't... I'm... Worried he might charge off into another coffin. Quite. As for why I've done so little about such a looming existential threat, to be blunt, I have been rather busy. <laughs> Besides which, don't forget I am still living at Her Majesty's pleasure, due in no small part to your actions. So by this point, all I can do is confirm that everything Peter has told you is true. I think he wants me to join the Lonely. Then it sounds like you have a decision to make. What? <laughs> That's it? No, no monologue, no mind games? You love manipulating people. That makes two of us. <sighs> But no, this is too important for me to jeopardise with cheap mind games. I simply have to trust that when the time comes, you'll make the right choice. Great. Great, great. So what you're actually saying is that you're going to be no help whatsoever. Just like old times. I don't know what I expected. Right. Right, we're done here. Don't forget to keep in touch, Martin. There are so many people in here. But without one's friends... It does get rather lonely. Uh, the, um, the letter ends there. Uh, 
apparently Robert Smirk was found collapsed in his study that evening, dead of uh, apoplexy. Hmm. I, I don't know how the letter reached the archives. I mean, I can guess, but... So, so what? What does it mean? Am I supposed to be reassured that the new entities can be born? That there's some, some kind of precedent for the extinction? Peter? Huh. Maybe he has gone to a party. <laughs> anyway. Smoke was clearly wrong about the powers balancing each other, at least. I mean, it, it's, it's obviously impossible. There's too much variation in, in how much something is feared by people at any one time. And, and if that's the case, I suppose it's not impossible that Peter might be telling the truth. I don't know what he's talking about when he mentions Millbank. The old prison, I guess? Tim said the tunnels under the Institute were all that was left of it, but John said he'd checked them pretty thoroughly. I'm not the one who knows all about this stuff. I wish... No. No, it's fine. I'm fine. I... I can do this. I don't know what Peter's planning, but my, my guess is that it might involve something below the Institute. Hopefully by the time you get these tapes, I'll have something more concrete for you. Good luck, John. I... Stay safe. Nice to see Gertrude also used to get a lot of threats. So far it doesn't seem that any went desperately well, except for Elias, of course. But he didn't threaten, did he? He just did it. I'm curious to see what it was she did to derail this big ritual, because I'm sure she didn't pay poor Jack Barnabas to fall in love with Agnes. Well, 90% sure. No one's come seeking vengeance recently, though, and looking at the details for the British steel plant in Scunthorpe, it does seem like Eugene is still around. So I can only assume some sort of equilibrium was found. Given what happened when I met Jude Perry, I'm not in any rush to track him or any of them down myself. Diego, I assume to be Diego Molina, who Basira crossed paths with back in her sectioned days, and Arthur... Could be Arthur Nolan, though going from the head of a cult to watching over Jane Prentice as a landlord does seem like something of a demotion. God knows. It's not like I don't have my own office politics to keep track of. The others are doing better, I think. Basir is busy doing research for something secretive, unsurprisingly. But she seems to be adjusting to uh, the new Daisy. I actually like Daisy now, which is a really weird feeling. Melanie's quiet, but I think therapy's helping. Haven't seen Helen much. The door is sometimes there, sometimes not. I haven't knocked. I'm never going to trust it. Trust her. Trust it. And I shouldn't. Whatever its relationship to the person who was or is Helen, assuming that I can ever know its motivations is a mistake. And that just leaves Martin, which... Why were we chosen? Agnes was created, crafted with a specific purpose, so finely tuned that even a grain of uncertainty threatened the entirety of her being. But I'm so full of doubt, it feels like there's no room for anything else, and I'm sure Martin is the same. Is there destiny here? Bloodlines and prophecies? Or did we just stumble into this? Maybe we're the opposite of Agnes. Maybe our doubts are exactly what we need. If that's the case, I'm a, an amazing chosen one. I don't know how that would work, though. I'm just worried about Martin. Christ. Every other avatar gets to have their feelings burned right out of them, but me? I've just got to sit in mine. I know he said he had everything under control. I need to trust him. Whatever he's doing with Peter, he's... He knows what he's doing. Probably. 
I just... I need him to be okay. I just do. If I... knew... what his plan was... if I knew what Peter was doing, if I just... Can I? And and end recording. Coffee. What? Coffee. Drink it. I don't really yet. Fine. You look awful. You tried drinking with Daisy again last night. She was here last night, as you know. Drinking alone, then? It's not a hangover. Well, not... I wasn't drinking. Drugs, then? You sick? Got some weird monster disease? Seriously? We've been over this. You need to tell me stuff. Communication works both ways, you know. (sighs) Yesterday, I tried something. I... I... I deliberately tried to know something like I did in the coffin but there was a lot too much and uh, what did you find out nothing there was too much you don't remember any of it you drink the whole contents of a bar in three seconds you don't remember what the merlot tastes like it just hurt sure what's that statement you in a condition for it yes yes what's this one about it took me a while to hunt it down again, but you remember Maxwell Rayner? Yes, of course. Your warehouse showdown? Yeah, well, the whole thing kind of stayed with me. Mm, I can imagine. Well, there's more history there than we thought. Capital H, history. John Flamsteed? But Sarah, this is from way before the Institute. The first astronomer royal. Had the post until his death in 1720. 1719. He died on New Year's Eve. Sorry, I didn't... Can't really help it. (laughs) Well, either way, he really hated the man who succeeded him. His former assistant, Edmund Haley. As in Haley's Comet, Haley? Yep. And Flamsteed had a... What's the opposite of a pet name? Like a nickname for someone you hate? Uh... Well, he had one of them for Haley. Called him Raymer. Raymer? And you think... Names shift over the years. Especially if you're not keen on keeping the same body. Right. Just have a read. Let me know when you're done. You're not staying? Watching you do your thing. No. I suppose I understand. Right. So? So Edmund Haley was Rayner. Or, at least, whatever was inside him. You said it was dead, though. I thought it was. We shot him to hell before he could, uh, pour himself into that kid. Mm. But, I mean, didn't you say he got blown up in World War One as well? Uh, possibly. The, the details are, um, it's not exactly clear. You don't know? No, and I'm not about to push my luck and try to force it. Besides, I, I rarely get anything when the dark is involved. It... It's a bit of a blind spot. Hmm. Point is, we can't be sure. Agreed. You don't know what the ritual for the dark is, right? Not really, no. Um, based on this and everything. Uh, something to do with the sun, I would guess. I, uh, an eclipse, maybe. I don't think so. Hmm. There's not one due for a while, and I've been wondering for ages. Why in the Alicent? I mean, sure, that far north it gets dark for a long time, but... There's also really long days in the summer. Okay. But I think... Have you got a pen? Uh, yeah, in the drawer. Uh, John? What's this? Hmm? Oh. That's... That, uh, that's my rib. Right. Yep. And the jar of ashes. Uh, not not mine. I, I mean, it belongs to me, I, I guess, but it's not. Uh, stationery is in the other drawer. Right. Thanks. Mm. Okay. Now, look here. 
Right. Yeah, yes, I, I know where it is. I don't think Nialisund is the ritual location. Right. I think it's a, a staging ground. For what? The darkest place on the surface of the Earth. The North Pole during the winter solstice. I hope you're not suggesting that Santa works for the People's Church. John, it's 11 weeks of pitch black night, as far from the sun as you can get on the planet. All right. So why haven't they done it already? I think they were waiting for Reyna to get his new body. But my sources tell me now that they're gearing up for something. These sources, are they the same ones that sent you to the Australian outback <sighs> while I was burying myself alive? Their info is normally good. Mm. There is one more thing that might convince you. They have an eldritch ball of some sort of manifested dark matter that's going to be the focus of the ritual. I thought you said you couldn't know things about them. I can still read. Actually, you should probably see that state. You know what? No, later. So what's the plan? I'm getting us passage on a boat heading up there. Right. I bring all the guns from Daisy's old stash. You bring the spooks you used to mess up that delivery guy. Well, that's it. Christ, I thought my plans were half-assed. It's all about when we go. I don't follow. Summer solstice is the 21st of June, so we leave in a fortnight. It should arrive about a week before. No danger of sunset or darkness for a long time. Stands to reason that they'll be at their weakest. I don't know. Is Daisy coming? No. Oh, I, I, I just thought... We've talked about it. If the hunt takes her again... We don't know if she's coming back, and neither I... of us want that. No, uh, of course. And I, I don't imagine Melanie would be keen to come. She wasn't. Why am I always the last to know about these things? And by this point, I just assume the eyeball tells you. That would imply it tells me anything useful. No, I'm stuck knowing how your year eight PE teacher died. Miss Peterson? Pancreatic cancer, if you're interested. I... wasn't? No, no, uh, of, co of course not. <clears throat> All right, so just me and you, then. I don't suppose you could get some of the team that helped you take Rainer down last time. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll just drop them a message. You know, we've actually got a group chat going called British Cops who love to do extrajudicial spook killings on foreign soil. I'll just see if they're free Saturday. Yes, yes, all right. All right. You're sure about this? No. But if I'm right, this is the best chance we're going to get. And I can't do it alone. Okay, then. Let's do it. Any better? Not really. You were the one that suggested we go by boat. Didn't think I... Oh. I haven't really done proper boats before. Hold on. Excuse me? Yeah? Do you know when we're scheduled to arrive? Captain reckons two days. Thank you. He says another two days. Yeah, I heard. Thanks. What? The tape recorder. Get ready. Any idea what's coming? No, no. Uh, no, I, I don't think that's it. It's not recording for nothing. No, I, th I think... Excuse me? Yeah. You. Uh, John. You used to work for Salesa. Well, I, you, who did? I don't know what you're talking about. Mikhail Salesa. You used to work on his ship. I don't know you. But I know you. John. Floyd Mathar, who served on the Dorian from 2011 to 2014 with Salesa. John, I'm not sure about this. I am. Tell me what happened. Oh, what is this? Whenever you're ready. Thank you. What? What? You can go. Um, I... I don't... Thank you, Floyd. You've been very helpful. Okay. It's all right, Floyd. You just need a break. Yeah. Sure. What the hell was that? He had information about Salesa. I thought it would help. Is that why you were so keen on this ship? I wasn't sure. Just had a hunch there was something here. And what? You thought the best way to find it was by slurping it out of his brain? He didn't exactly seem inclined to volunteer the information. 
Besides, you said I needed to be ready for Niala Sund. Full power, I believe were your words. The statement helped. And now he's going to see you in his dreams as he relives that for the rest of his life. Because, because a tape recorder told you to do it. Yes, Basira, he is. And I am sorry about that. But we needed it. Anyway, you're the one who wants to be like Gertrude. You think she'd give a damn about a few bad dreams? No. No. She got the job done and didn't care about the cost. But I thought you did. I had to know, Sarah. It wasn't right. You could have stopped me. But you wanted to know as well, didn't you? Get some rest. Two days yet. Uh, uh, right, so what happened? I don't, uh, look, I just need to, to talk to a, a manager or something. Okay, uh, well, I... Uh, uh, yeah, actually, <laughs> I'm a I'm a manager. Go on. Okay. Well, I'd like to to talk to you about one of your staff. Go on. There's uh, there's been I'm being harassed. Okay. Um. Just uh, just let me grab a form. Uh. One second. Uh, okay. Okay. Um. What? Would you mind telling me what happened? Uh. What they did. He. Ah, all right. Um, did he... Did he look like he hadn't slept in like a week? Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, he's right. been... Yeah, I think he's been uh, following me, kind of. Yeah, I see. Well, he's not here at the moment, so, I mean... Yeah, why don't you tell me what happened? Look, it's... I, I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Well, you know... Uh, Weird is what we do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just, just tell me what happened. Um, please, I, I won't judge. So I want to put in a complaint, like, like a proper complaint. I don't want to go to the police. I mean, I, they would, they wouldn't even, you know, let me get this far now, would they? But <laughs> sorry. So thanks. I guess. Okay. Um. Right. Well, firstly, I'm re I'm really sorry that this happened. Um, in in terms of next just, steps, I just I don't know. You know, talk to him. I guess Let's just tell him. Look, look, I mean that. It's not okay. You know, right? I'm not. I don't know what he did, but it. You know, he can't just go around and well, you know, just keep doing. No, I, I I understand. Good. Well. I just, I don't want to see him again, all right? Ever. Wait, hold on, no, hold on, I just I, need I, to... No, that's it, that's my complaint. You know, I, I, I can't, this place, I, I can't be here. I have to, uh, no, bye. Uh, but you didn't give me your name. the hell do I do with that? I mean, Christ, John, that's, that's not okay. Oh, that can't... that can't... I mean, it's not him, is it? Not not really, is it? What, addiction? Instinct? Maybe mind control? Something like that? I can't believe he'd choose to do something like that. No, no, I, I can't think like that, though. I, I can't let myself, because, I mean, if if he's already gone, then all of this is just... The worst part is I don't even want to talk to him about it. I'm just... I suppose I'm just getting comfortable with the distance. Cut off. <laughs> Lonely. Mind you, Peter's not wrong. It really is easier than actually just trying to communicate with people. I should probably try to get him this tape. Let him know what happened. That someone came into... But then, <laughs> would that just come across as an accusation? Because I don't want to... And then, and then I guess he hear this bit as well, so... I, I, what do I do? Go away. 
come in. Hey. Um, hi. You mind? Can I help you? I, I saw someone come out, so I, I thought that, you know... Do you, do you want something? No, I'm just... Just ignore me. Continue with... Whatever. Are you alright? Yeah. Just a, a bit empty around here, you know? Not really. Melanie's out and... John and Basir are still off. A bit worried. But they can take care of themselves, you know? Again, not really. <laughs> no one talks to me anymore. Because they reckon you're working for the bad guy? Pretty much. Don't you? Oh, I mean, you're definitely working for something evil, but so are we. Yeah. Seems there's plenty to go around these days. It doesn't bother you? Didn't used to. And now? Well, there's me less than trying to go alone. At least now it's on my terms, better than being blackmailed into it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess. They told you about Elias, right? Yeah. Basira said, Don't like him being alive. Try not to think about it too much. Don't want to get too angry. Start to hear the blood. Sure. Can't hear his lies from prison, though, so that's something. I thought you believed him. You were doing all of his dirty work. Well, wasn't willing to call his bluff. Not the same thing as believing. Just too big a risk. Not for Melanie. Well, maybe she was the only one with any sense. Even if he was telling the truth, if we all died, there are worse things. How was it? Don't want to talk about it. I listened to your old statement. Wasn't your partner down there? Yeah. Didn't find him. You don't want to go get him? I'm not going back. Hmm. I thought you'd at least tried, or... I said I don't want to talk about it. I know. Not nice being interrogated, is it? I... Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry, Martin. It's alright. It wasn't you. Not really. No, it was. I hate a lot of what I did back then. Doesn't mean I'm not responsible for it. Doesn't mean it wasn't me. Anyway. So what's this field trip they're on? They, uh, they didn't tell you? <laughs> no, I... What? Daisy, where have they gone? You know that town in Norway? What? No, what? what? You, you don't mean Niala's son? Yeah... They reckon there's a ritual they need to, you know. Yeah, but Peter didn't even... Ma I don't believe this. Sorry. Shouldn't have said anything. No, no, it's... Thank you, I just... Oh, for God's sake, can he not just stay safe for like, like ten minutes? I don't think that's an option for him anymore. Yeah, I mean, sure, but he just... He doesn't think. He always just immediately charges straight off into danger with whatever, whatever half ass plan occurs to him at the time. I don't get it. What's to get? What? I mean, it's pretty standard stuff. What? You used to see it all the time back in the force, especially with the section. Not like there's normal trauma, you know? But it's pretty common. The most important thing becomes control, engaging on your own terms. Even when it's stupid or dangerous. Anything to not feel helpless. Oh, God. And, of course, for John, there's survivor's guilt in there, too. He thinks he's not human. Makes him very... Self-destructive. Yeah, well, we've all had trauma. And everyone's changed. Yeah. I suppose. You're... You're pretty observant, you know. Detective, remember? Yeah, you did mention. I would have thought Basira would have had more sense, though. When Basira and I were partners, I'd see this happen sometimes. She can read a situation like no one I know always seems to know the right move, but for all her research, she never wants to put a plan together. I think she just hates all the unknowns, the variables, uh, contingencies. If she spots an advantage, she'll grab it and trust herself to figure out the details as she goes. Hmm. It's worked so far. I mean, I guess. 
Still sounds really dangerous. Yeah. Wanted to go with them, protect them, but... Life's always more complicated than that, isn't it? Not really. Are you recording, or...? Hmm? Oh! Oh no, there was... Hang on. Sure it's this one? Tape recorder thinks so too. Right. Something's coming then? Could be. No windows. Guess that makes sense. We still alone? I never said we were. Just said I couldn't see anybody. Oh, I thought you meant like see, see. Uh, no. We need to figure out Robert's house for this. What are you doing? Closing the door. Leave it open. We need as much light as possible and I'm not seeing any bulbs. Right. Eyes peeled. Was that a joke? Yeah. Any clue where everyone is? Your guess is as good as mine. Well, my guess is an ambush. I don't know. Everyone back at the research base seemed pretty sure this place was empty. And you believe them? Well, they weren't lying. Wait, you did your... Uh, oh, speak? yeah, no, I, I don't think they noticed. So they were serious? It's been empty for, what, a year? A bit more. As far as they knew, anyway. So what? This was another waste of time. No church, no dark sun. I'm gonna kill that son of a bitch. No, I... I think it's here. I, I can feel it like a... a hole in my mind. They just left it here? I... Maybe. I kinda wish Daisy was here. Basira? Yeah? Sorry. I know this isn't- Behind you! Down! Don't move! Oh, charming. Who are you? John? Who are you? Manuela. Manuela Dominguez. Where is everybody? Go to hell! Answer her. They're dead. Because of you. Me? What did you do? Nothing, I don't think. Your institute. What? So she sent you to finish the job. Who? Your archivist. Uh, Gertrude Robinson. Gertrude? It I... doesn't make any sense. Uh, what happened? Don't... Don't make me, please. Tell me. <sighs> Fine. Fine. There. Now you can kill me like the others. Is she telling the truth? Yeah. I, I mean, unless she can lie to me somehow. You said it wasn't the eclipse. It's not the time. Well, she believes it at least. This doesn't make any sense. Well, where is she? Afraid to face what she's done? Just shut up. <laughs> Coward. So, how did she do it? It's been three years, waiting, guarding this place without hope. At least do me the courtesy of telling me how she collapsed our moment of triumph. You really don't know, do you? Know what? Gertrude's dead. She died right around the time of your ritual. <laughs> so, stopping us took everything she had. You wish. She was murdered. Unrelated, as far as we can tell. That's I... Then why are you here? Maxwell is dead. The ritual failed. What's left? A good question, Basira. You said the Dark Sun was still here. <laughs> Fine. If you're so keen to take everything, undo the work of centuries, it's just through that door. John? How dangerous is it? Only myself, Maxwell, and Natalie could even look upon it. It will annihilate you both in an instant. Ask her how we can destroy it. I know how. I just need to see it. See as in? As in, actually see it. Go ahead. Just try. Look, it's all right, John. No one else knows it's here. 
And if we just leave it, no one will know. No. I, I'm doing this. Get out. Beautiful. No. No. John. No, no I'm, I'm I'm okay. Get down. Go. Vasera? I'm all right. Just just one second. I'm, Stay here. Look, I'm okay. I can help. Ah. Uh. Did you catch her? Yes. <sighs> she needed a door. Uh, how did you... Well, finding this place was easy without the darkness. Will she be coming back? No. Uh, this one I think I'll keep. I... Why are you here? I told you. I've decided to help. I thought you might like a way home. Another door? If you want to. How was it? Hmm? Looking upon the dark. I thought I was going to die. You seem to think that a lot. I remember when you thought you were going to die at my threshold. Yeah. Go find your Basira. Then let's get you both home. Right, another statement, another side to Peter's extinction, I think. I, you know, I couldn't follow some of his reasoning, but I think it was about nuclear weapons, or, or maybe doomsday weapons? In keeping with the theme, I suppose. I just wish Peter would spend less time trying to convince me his new power is real, and more time telling me what he plans to do about it and where I fit in. I mean, fine, I guess I believe... Come in. Mind if I join you? They're back. I thought you might want to know. Seems like it went smooth. Too smooth for Basira, sounds like. Keeps looking at John like she can't believe he made it back. I, uh, I mentioned our conversation to him. He asked me to check Just on... leave. Sorry? Get out. Oh. Right. Sorry, I didn't... It's not difficult. Just get out. Fine. Fine. Just thought... No! I... No, you didn't! We're not... We're not friends, Daisy! None of us are. We're all just trapped together here and, and kidding ourselves that we don't hate it. Christ, there are more important things than, than feelings right now, all right? <laughs> so just leave me alone. For good. Right. You got it. Well, I'm impressed. And grateful. I didn't do it for you. Even better. It's easier this way. I'm sure you'd have had no problem sending her away. I hadn't really thought about it. And now, thanks to you, I don't need to. Yeah, well, it seems to be your go-to move for dealing with anyone. I'm just not big on confrontation. You understand, I'm sure. We are not the same. Of course. So what now? Did you read it? Yeah. And? I believe you. You don't still think I'm trying to trick you into a grand ritual? I mean, I'm not about to start chanting stuff for you, but... But the details you've given me all seem to check out. So far. Good. So what's our next step? 
For you, keep researching. I'm sure we haven't found all the statements in here that deal with the extinction yet. One of the downsides of not serving the Ceaseless Watcher is that we have to actually look things up. Not to mention the fact that Gertrude was distressingly good at obfuscation. The more you know about our enemy, the better. And you? I have my own explorations I need to attend to. And a, um, meeting to arrange. For you. For me? I'm absolutely delighted with your progress, and I feel you've earned some straight answers. But not from you. Oh no. That sort of conversation makes me very uncomfortable. No, I'm owed a favour by a friend of mine. I've asked him to stop by when he's back in the country. You're not just going to tell me, maybe? When have I ever? <sighs> oh, come now. What would life be without the occasional twist? Oh, speaking of which, I've had a report of a workplace dispute in the library, and I would value your input. I'm trying to get out of the habit of, what did you call it, sending them away? Fine. You don't mind, do you? Of course I do. Well, that's a shame. If I really wanted to kill you, that thing can stop me. If that were a possibility, Arthur, I should hardly have agreed to meet you. Yeah, you would. You'd have set something up. Try to get me first. If I wanted you dead, Arthur, there are much simpler ways to do it. Yeah. Think you know how? I do, yes. And I am very willing to, if necessary. Well, I am sure I am shaking in my boots. <laughs> Look, Arthur, I need you to understand that this isn't simple posturing. I don't see a way we can meaningfully progress this conversation while you're under the impression that your threats mean anything to me. Big talk. But Agnes is dead. And I don't know if you heard, but your little woodland circle's been broken. So I don't really see anything getting in my way if I wanted to burn the flesh off your snarky bones. Ah, I assume you haven't checked on uh, Eugene, then? What? Eugene. Well, whatever his name was, Vanderbilt or some such. You sent him to intimidate me a couple of years ago. You must remember. Of course, you know him. He used to live in Beckenham, but moved out to that flat in um, Ilford last year. Yeah. Well, he hasn't been at your little meetings the last two weeks, has he? I suppose no one's looked into it yet. Not surprising. He seemed a thoroughly unpleasant little man. Why? Oh, he... Tell you what, why don't you make a few calls, check it out, and then we can continue our little discussion. All right? Well? How'd you do it? <laughs> you don't need to know that. What you do need to know is I can do it again, if I need to. To you, or... Any of your lackeys, if I need to. Not mine anymore. Well, no, I forgot. Your authority isn't what it used to be these days. Yeah. Well, if a warning from you isn't going to convince them, let me know. I'd be happy to provide a further example. You've made your point. Good. Eugene, it, it hurt him. Oh, yes. I'm sure your master was delighted with how... Awful his death was. Don't push it. You know, thinking about it, the amount of pain and loss and legitimate devastation I've caused among your little cult over the last, what, 40 years? I think the desolation is probably very fond of me. That's blasphemy, that is. Is it? Or maybe you just picked a bad god. Shut it. I don't have to listen to this. Mm. <laughs> then feel free to try and leave. Now, here's the problem for you, Arthur. The way I see it, you came here believing that whatever defences or assurances I might have had died with Agnes, or were broken along with the circle. And whether or not you actually killed me, you were really hoping to use me to restore your standing with the lightless flame. Murder, kidnap, torture, or something to impress the church group. Unluckily for you, I've had almost four decades to prepare for this, and now... <laughs> well, you just don't know if killing Eugene was the end of it. 
Well, maybe I have something special prepared for you as well. You're so goddamn smug. And you're all lazy fools. So used to it being easy, to picking off the vulnerable and the unprepared. You can barely conceive of anyone actively working against you, of being ready. You honestly thought when she died, I'd just be struck dumb with terror. Just waiting for one of you to finally get around to revenge, paralysed with fear, because that's all you've ever known. You've made your point. Oh, I'm pleased to hear it. And do you? Do I what? That's something for me. So I end up like Eugene. <laughs> Why don't you try to leave and find out? Good. Now we can have a proper conversation. You mean, you ask me questions and I'll, well, spill my guts? <laughs> no need to be petulant, Arthur. If it would make you feel better, you could ask me a question first. All right. Agnes, how'd you do it? Never did understand it, not really. Ah, uh, that's a fair enough question. It was the web. I didn't know it at the time, of course. And I would call it an accident, but it never is with them. It's only after the fact that you can see all the subtle manipulations. I was very new to it all, of course. I mean, I was, what, can't have been older than 25. Would you believe that you were the first proper ritual attempt I'd encountered? <laughs> I really thought you were unique. Special. An infernal cult raising their demon messiah to bring about hell on earth. You can imagine all the heroic fantasies that that played into. So, I began researching what I thought was a counter-ritual of sorts. Like I said, I was young. Naive. I somehow found just the right books, made just the right connections, and even got what I thought was a piece of blind good luck when I found a tin box in the ashes of Hilltop Road containing some perfectly preserved cuttings of her hair. Of course, what I thought was a banishment ritual turned out not to be. The circle I'd constructed was more of a... an invitation. It let the mother of puppets bind me to Agnes interweave our existences at some metaphysical level, as it had with Fielding and the house. It was the most painful experience of my life. I mean, I'm sure it's nothing to you, but I'd never had my lungs try to burn me alive from the inside out before. I survived, though, and you know the rest. I'm not sure exactly how it manifested on your end. You certainly seem to get the message. I kept the circle over the years, laced it through with signs and symbology of the desolation to ward off the worst of the side effects and keep its attentions elsewhere. Don't envy whoever broke it. Yes. It went very badly for them indeed. So where was it in the end? I spent years looking for it. <laughs> Nowhere special. The middle of a forest in the Scottish Highlands. Furthest place I could find from anything and anyone. <laughs> yeah, fair play. Not like we were ever going to find that. So, your turn. <sighs> Go on. What was Agnes like? Well... Well... For all the web bound us together, I never actually met her. What was she like? I... I don't know. Not really. You got as many answers to that as... folks who met her. Never really knew what she felt about any of it. Not really. Not in her own words. Guess that's the thing about being the chosen one. I mean, Agnes was always quiet. And even if you spend all day, every day, throwing out commandments and laying down parables, at the end of it, you're always just the point of someone else's story. 
everyone clamouring to say what you were, what you meant, and your thoughts on it all don't mean nothing. And were you this introspective when she was alive? Well, that's the thing about a fall from grace, isn't it? It makes you look at things from a new angle. I miss her. I'll tell you that for nothing. Wish I'd... I don't know. I actually known her when she was alive. Maybe that coffee shop twit did have a point after all. I can tell you what I saw, at least. Which was? I saw the sun. So much power and fire and rage inside of her. Enough to burn the world and leave it nothing but desert. But to look at her, oh, it was too much for most. But it seemed so still, so stable. But it wasn't calm. It was just distant. She never told us how she felt about being bound to you. Never even called you by name. Just called you her anchor. The thing weighing her down and tying her to this world, stopping her destiny. Hmm. I'm surprised you didn't come for me immediately. Come for you? <laughs> we ended up protecting you more often than not. Diego was convinced if you died a violent death it would be catastrophic for Agnes. He even talked me around. And I spent decades convincing the others to wait it out. You couldn't outrun age forever. And we had time. But it didn't need to be forever, did it? Just long enough for a messiah to doubt. The sort of doubts that spread to her disciples. You've never really had to bother with it, have you? You got him upstairs to point the way as often as not, and the rest of the time you're just figuring out people. Or things that used to be people. You never tried to talk with that eye of yours. You never had to second guess at God. Because that's what it comes down to, isn't it? We feel it's joy and it's anger. It warps us and changes us and feeds on us. Though not in the ways we expect. The one thing it never does is just... Tell us what to do. It seeds us with this aching, impossible desire to change the world, to bring it to us. Then it leaves us to guess and bicker and fight over how the hell you can actually do it. If it's possible. Sometimes I think they understand us as little as we understand them. We don't think like they do. I'm not actually convinced they think at all. You might be right. But Agnes did. That's the thing about an incarnation, isn't it? She was a child and person as much as she was a god. And we messed that right up. I still remember when Diego bought us a book on childcare. Roger's body was still in her room, blackened and smoking from when he tried to feed her. I thought for a moment he brought another one of his damn lightners, but no. It was just a... Regular old book on looking after children. I was an idiot. So it is attacking my leadership. Burnt the thing. Diego wasn't happy. Well, he's in charge now. Of all of us that are left, at least. He can look for the answers in whatever books he likes. No skin off my bones. I didn't actually ask. I figure if you're going to pull this stuff out of me, I, I might as well get some of it off my chest anyway. <laughs> Not like I can vent to the others about what a prat Diego is. Got a lot of funny ideas. Still calls the lightless flame a sag. Like he was when he was first researching it. I just want to tell him to get over it. I mean, a sag was traditionally a force of destruction, sure. But as a church, we very much settled on burning in terms of the face we worship. So some fish-boiling Sumerian demon doesn't really match up, does it? Plus, there's a lot of disease imagery with a sag that I reckon is way too close to filth for my tastes. But, but no, he read it in some ancient tome, so that's that. Well, I can't say Reckons I... Reckons he always knows best, because he's read a few books. Well, big deal. The way I see it, if a writer can't even save themselves, they probably don't have a lot worth knowing. 
find me one so-called expert on all of this who didn't end up regretting all of it. That's the trouble with overthinking any of this. You ignore your gut. And to my mind, that's the only part any of them beyond actually care about. They don't give a toss about your rules or systems. They only care about what feels right, what freezes your belly with terror. <laughs> I rather like to think I've managed. <laughs> yeah. But you don't actually care about them, do you? Not really. You forget. We've been watching you a long time. And I know you, Gertrude. You don't actually care about the fears. You're too practical. All your energy is focused down here on monsters and murderers and all the things doing the dirty work for them beyond. You know plenty, sure. But you don't have that obsession, that stupid urge to try and understand and classify things that use logic and reality like weapons. Hmm. Perhaps. Always respected you for that takes a strong stomach to not give a shit. <laughs> You'll forgive me if I'm not overjoyed at the compliment. Suit yourself. So, now Diego has taken over, where does that leave you? <laughs> Slumlording over a nest. Oh, a nest of what? Found a mass of the crawling rot growing a while back. Managed to get hold of the property before it became too big. Gotta wait till it blossoms before we can properly burn it. So until then, just playing landlord. It's all right, I guess. You'd be surprised the misery and pain you can cause when you have control over someone's home. If you're careful, if you're smart, you can burn their life to ashes as thoroughly as any fire. And worse comes to worst, you can still do it the old fashioned way. Had an elderly tenant last year. Oh, she was in a terrible state. I had a trap, too poor and immobile to do anything but sit there. Then I broke her boiler, so the cold started to get her. Not exactly my usual, but agony is agony. But then her son and his wife moved in with her to help her out. Not much I could do against that, so I just waited until all three were home and set the place ablaze. They went up nicely, screaming all the way as the flames started to reach them. Doors were locked and the handles too hot so they didn't have a hope of escape. Yes, that's quite enough, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. There I was thinking you liked the gory details. My mistake. I think we're just about done here. All your burning questions answered. I'm certainly convinced you don't know anything else useful. So, I'm free to go. You're not going to, you know. I suppose you'll have to wait and see. Suppose I will. You tell the others. Make sure they know what happened to Eugene. Sure. Can't make any promises, though. Especially for Jude. She really hates you. Tell her she's welcome to try. Oh, and tell them I'm extending my protection to young Mr. Barnabas. They hurt him any more, then what happened to Eugene will seem like a mercy. You're really pushing it. You know that. <laughs> Feel free to push back. But until then, get out of my archives. The more I listen and learn, the more it seems to me we're all just groping about trying desperately to find out what we're actually meant to be doing. These things that loom so large over our lives trap us and push us and sometimes kill us. But they never actually tell us what we're supposed to be doing. So we scheme and we plot, lash out at each other without ever really knowing why. I think Gertrude knew this. Knew to focus her attention on those parts that could be understood and... Well, and killed. But I'm really starting to worry that there aren't any answers. Not like I want there to be. There aren't any answers at Nihalasund. There aren't any answers in the past. I've been inside the buried. 
and there were no answers there. Elias always seemed to know what was going on, to have a plan, but I sometimes wonder just how orchestrated some of it really was. We've been back in London for just over a week now. I'm more or less recovered physically. It's just this nagging sense of unease that won't leave me. I was so sure I'd find something up there. But instead it was just another broken person trying to come to terms with the wreckage of their life. And here, I reached out, I took another tape, I, hoping for a bit of guidance, but... To be honest, this hasn't helped. I did some more digging into Eugene van der Stock. I thought he was still alive and working at the steel plant, but it looks like he's just listed on one of the old directory pages on their website. I really miss having people who know their way around a computer better than I do. A bit more digging found a rather bizarre case. Apparently he disappeared in late 2009, leaving behind only one thing. A life-sized statue of himself, crafted from candle wax and sawdust, missing its head. I wish I didn't know how painful it must be to be alive while your whole being is infused with agonizing grit. But as I was investigating, it came to me. Eugene is still alive, frozen in place by the razor-sharp particles that are mixed up into what he chose instead of flesh. I don't know where Gertrude stored his head, but I do know it desperately wants to scream. Perhaps I can... Knock, knock. Oh, G Georgie. Oh, what a... um, you... sorry, I thought, um, is Melanie about? Melanie? Uh, yeah, I saw her a couple of hours ago. Uh, in the other office, I, I can show you? Oh, I'm sure I can find it. Don't worry yourself. All right. Uh, why are you, uh, well, here? If it's not too personal a question. It is a bit. It's not really my place to discuss it. Uh, therapy? You're taking her to therapy? She... Told you, then? Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, you don't need to sound quite so psyched about it. She gets nervous travelling there alone. Yes, uh, of course. I forget you two know each other. So... How are you doing? I'm... I'm alright. I'm trying to, uh... Rest up a bit. Take it easy. Really? Because I'm pretty sure I heard you talking about a screaming headless corpse just now. Oh, uh, oh, were you listening? Oh, um, didn't mean to. You know, these doors are not that thick. Fine. I'm deep in it. Had some close calls. I'm sorry to hear that. You should probably get some therapy, too. Would you go with me as well? No. Yeah. I thought as much. The other office, you say? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Take care of yourself. You too. End recording. So it seems we did have Marcus Mackenzie's statement after all. I spent so long looking for it back when I found his father's, and no luck. But now I decide to start looking properly into Hilltop Road, and all of a sudden, I'm drawn to rearrange a filing cabinet. And what do I find behind it? I never thought I'd miss those days, when I could throw out some half-baked speculation about drug abuse or mental illness and whoosh. Away all the statements went. There is... Nothing in the world more reassuring than ignorance, which we can mistake for certainty. But no, almost every one of those statements, those people, that poor old man, like I can talk, 
like I'm in any position to mourn the suffering of the innocent. But there is one thing I know an awful lot better now than I did when I read his father's statement. I know an awful lot more about doors. You rang? Marcus Mackenzie. Why didn't you tell me? Is that name supposed to mean something to me? No. I suppose it wouldn't, would it? Just an old man and his son for you to terrorise and feast on. Ah, well. The son I was pursuing long before I was even Michael. And technically, I didn't eat the old man. He passed away from terror before I even got a chance to open properly. And his son Marcus, he, he was fine when I found his father's statement two years ago, but now, suddenly, I can't get through to him. No, I imagine not. I decided it was time to finish that game a few months ago. You... Why? Not sure. I suppose Helen didn't have quite the same attachment to him as a project. I'm not quite as much for decades-long campaigns of subtle terror these days. That's horrible. Is it? We do what we need to do when it comes to feeding, don't we? Don't we, archivist? Yes. It would be better if you embraced it. It's not... Look, why were you trying to lure him into Hilltop Road? That? Oh, well, that was just curiosity. I wanted to see what would happen. I don't understand. There is something wrong with Hilltop Road. You know it as well as I do. Some strange scar in reality at the centre of whatever it is the spider is spinning. When young Mr. Mackenzie passed, it seemed like a good opportunity for an experiment. To see what would happen if I lured him inside. But it seems I just don't have the web's gift for manipulation or persuasion. Were you controlled? What a delightful thought. I don't believe so, no. But the spider strings are subtle, so I suppose it's not impossible. Why? I, I want to know. Can the web control another avatar, one that serves a different power? Make them do things they don't want to. Make them find victims, feed. Oh, perhaps. Perhaps not. Would that make life easier for you? Are you so sure you didn't want to? <laughs> Been a while since you've all come to see me together. I assume it's not good news. No. What the hell have you been doing, John? Martin left a tape for us. And what exactly is on this... T oh. Yes. How many? Sarah, I... How many? Four. Jesus. Including the one on the boat? What one on the boat? Including Floyd? Five. Jesus. Do I even want to know? I do. Jess Terrell, the woman on the tape, she was the fourth. I, I just tried to... I was weak, ravenous. I, I didn't feel... The first was a supermarket cleaner. Um, ended up lost for a week in an endless warehouse. I didn't even... I, I just went in for some shopping and he was there and, and I just... asked. The second was, uh, it was after I got stabbed by Melanie. You are not putting this on no, me. No, that's not what I meant. I was walking the streets. I, I thought I was trying to clear my head. But you were hunting. Apparently. I found a woman who, every year on her birthday, wakes up in a fresh grave. Just for her. And the third was after the coffin. A man rejected by all who knew him. Searching ever darker places for love. When he told me his story, he started weeping maggots. Enough. I hope so. Why didn't you record them? Why do you think? Because he was ashamed. No, I don't... I mean, I don't record anything anymore. Not, not really. I just sort of assume they'll turn on if it's important. Well, they didn't. No, I suppose not. 
So, what do we do now? I don't know. You're a danger, John. A monster. You're hurting innocent people. So did Daisy. Shut up! It's not the same thing at all. Basira, he has a point. You didn't know what you were doing. And since you did, you've spent every waking hour resisting. He knows exactly what he's doing. I don't... It's not that simple. It feels... I don't know if I can control it. I don't know if it's even me doing it. So you say you're being controlled? I, I don't know. Maybe. The web what, is... what was the name you said before? Annabelle Kane? Yes, uh, she's she's been watching us. I, I'm pretty sure of it. John, I'm not sure that it's actually... No, no, if he is being controlled, we need to know. And we need to know now. Do you know where she is? Not... Not properly. I, I think she has some connection to Hilltop Road. Then we go. Now. Unless anyone has any objections. Not from me. You don't get a vote. Oh, okay, seriously, I- I'm going to have to be the one to point out that this is a terrible idea. Daisy? Be better if we could prepare. I, I just think that we shouldn't be exposing ourselves like this until we have a little bit more than a hunch. She does have a point. I didn't ask you. Okay, fine. I'll go then. I'll do some recon on my own and update you. Wait, hang on. Basira. I'll tell you all what I find. Don't let him eat anyone's brain while I'm gone. That's not what I do. But, but Basira, come, come on. Well, that was... Shut up. So we're going with her. Come on, Mel. I'll see if I've got a stab vest in your size. Yeah, sure. Heads up. The tape. Something's here. No shit. Look at this place. Yeah. When did you say they finished rebuilding? 2008. Doesn't look like anyone ever moved in, though. So this is ten years of cobwebs? More than that. No, I'm sure this is just the normal number of webs that grow up organically. So where are all the spiders? I I mean, they, they hide. You know, it's a thing they do, spiders. They hide. Perhaps they bugged out. Was that a joke? John, focus. Are you getting any sense of anything? Can you see anything? No, I'm just seeing what you're seeing. Still a bit weak from our trip north, to be honest. Sorry we couldn't stop for a snack. (laughs) Here, Mel. What even are these? Magnesium flares. Technically not legal anymore. If you need more, just shout. I'm fine. Uh, And... and Please don't call me Mel. What? Since when? Always. I'm trying to be more open about this stuff. Roger Wilco, Ms. King. Better. These flares going to work? No idea, but John said the web doesn't get on great with fire and we don't exactly have a flamethrower, so... I mean, at least until we find the one Gertrude's talk about. <sighs> right next to the nukes. I'm sure the flares will work fine. I mean, unless it's all some elaborate plot to have us burn this place down again. So what if it is? I don't follow. I mean, anything we do could be part of the grand master plan. So what, we do nothing? Just sit on our hands and hope that's not what the spiders want. (sighs) Right, sure, but it, it wouldn't hurt to have a bit more of a plan of our own, would it? Exactly. You want to come back later? Yes! That's what I said, isn't it? Well, we're here now. Might as well push on. Famous last words. Clear. Looks like nothing downstairs. You want to take a moment before we head up? What about the basement? Can't see one. Huh. You want me to take point? Uh, no. No, I've got it. You hear that? No, I, I don't shh, hear. Shh. Yes. Room on the left. An organization dedicated Is to that? The yes. Search into the esoteric and the paranormal. Don't touch the it. The head of the no. institute, Mr. Elias right. Bouchard, has employed me to replace the previous head archivist, one Gertrude Robinson, who has recently passed away. Something underneath it. I see it. Uh, hand me that brush. I think it is. Yep. Official institute paper and everything. God damn it. Statement of Annabelle Kane. 
She left it for us. I honestly don't know what else you guys were expecting. Well, that's it then. Come on, let's finish up and get out of here. I, I mean, are we, are we burning it? The statement or the building? Both. Don't tempt me. <laughs> don't go to Hilltop Road again. The statement ends. That was, uh, I, di I, I didn't like that. I couldn't. <clears throat> so, she is watching the Institute. Interfering with things. Is that reassuring or really, really bad? I can't say I'm... I can't say I'm sad to have another ally allegedly on our side, but I don't like the idea of being important to the web. That's a really bad place to be. Annabelle's right, though. I mean, I can't trust anything she says to not be another lie to further manipulate and manoeuvre us, but deep down I think she's right. What I've been doing to these people, it, it hasn't been because I was puppeted or controlled or possessed. I wanted to do it. It felt good. But at least I know I can stop. I just... don't know how. I... I don't want to stop. God damn. This one really took it out of me. I need to go lie down. Uh, end recording. Here we go. Good evening, Detective. Oh! Useless, oh. scheming piece of shit. Detective, this is quite <coughs> unnecessary. I'm sorry, was that unnecessary? Because this is the most helpful you've been so far. Unless you've got another crisis for me. No, no, no. It's fine. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah? For which part? All of it. You sent us to the North fucking Pole for no goddamn reason. A um, miscalculation. No. No, I'm done with your games. But, but Sarah, because... And when exactly were you planning to tell us he's been feeding on innocence? I've always thought that a man's eating habits were... His own private business. Mm -hmm. but, but I can see how maybe I should have mentioned it. Or that we were being stalked by some freaky spider woman. Don't tell me you didn't know about that. Uh, uh, yes. Well, to be honest, I, I'd advise you to leave that one well alone. Oh, yeah? Uh, look, look, look. I've been doing this a long time now, and if there's one thing I've learned about the web, it's that it plays its own game. All you can really do is hope it doesn't get in the way of whatever your plan is. Because the spider usually wins. Assuming you have a plan. Do you have a plan, detective? Why do you do that? What is that? Uh, do what? You always call me detective. Is that supposed to mean something? Honestly? I just like the way it sounds. So... Why do you agree to see me? I missed you. Right. That's why you've been refusing my visits since we got back. I, I thought it might have been an idea to give you some space. Oh, and how'd that work out for you? No, not ideally. So what now? Another wild goose chase? More gloating about John's destiny. Because right now, I'm having a real hard time figuring out why I shouldn't just tell them to throw your little deal out the window and see how you do in here without special treatment. <laughs> I mean, you have plenty of reasons to do that, of course. Uh, but I'm not sure that they have any reason to listen to you. I'll make them listen. Will you? You're not police anymore. You've done them some favours, but they've done you some as well. And I think you'll find that the information that I've been giving to them has been far more consistently useful. You want to issue them an ultimatum? Go right ahead. I'm just not sure it'll go quite how you hope. And, um, no more violence, detective. Or I may have to call in the guards.
So that's it, then? As far as I can tell, you have no interest in anything I have to say and mainly came here to let off some steam. So yes, that's probably it. Surprised you didn't foresee it. Well, that's always been my problem. Ever the optimist. You know, when you have no more useful information and they're done with you... You'll kill me. Yes. I'm sorry to say, Detective, but you're becoming predictable. <sighs> Goodbye, Detective. I shall miss our little chats. Well? Just useless gloating. Like I said he would. You should have let me come with. No. Besides, he wouldn't have seen me if I had. Can't believe you've been seeing him all this time. Oh yeah, that's the terrible secret sabotaging the trust between us. <sighs> Did he mention it at all? My, uh... Oh, your new diet? Nothing useful. Didn't seem too phased by it. <sighs> right. What? I don't know. I mean, we still don't really know what Elias actually is. I thought maybe if he was more like me than we realised... He might have some advice. Stupid, I know. Yeah. John, we've been over this. The key is to not force people to feed you their trauma. You know, just don't do it. It's not that simple. No, it is. Or I put you down. That's... I mean, that's hardly... Daisy's been managing. Daisy is... Yeah. She's managing. Did he say anything about Annabelle? Not really. Sounds like he's not too worried, though. Says to just ignore it. Yeah, good luck with that. Any luck finding her? I haven't really been trying. Doing that sort of thing consciously, it... makes me hungry. Oh, well then find a statement to your tastes and read it. Yes, yes, I know. Thank you. Basira. Yeah? I've been meaning to ask the tape. The one of the, uh... My victim. You said Martin gave it to you. Yeah. How was he? How did he look? Was he, uh... I don't know. I didn't see him. He just left it on my desk with a note. Oh. Right. Yeah. Can I ask what it said? Um, yeah, it said, uh, talk to him. <laughs> I'm going to get something to eat. <sighs> Better. Does reading a statement of the ceaseless watcher count as a sort of auto cannibalism, I wonder? Or some sort of bird like regurgitation of fear? Reconsuming second-hand terror. Whatever the analogy, I'm finding it harder and harder to ignore the diminishing returns. How much less satisfaction each one gives me. My desire for follow-up, for verification, for proper digestion. Of the experience, it grows less and less. I honestly don't care. If Mr. Mirage was chased down and consumed by his voyeuristic former friend. Or if he has forgotten the whole affair. Living in blissful ignorance. I just find my mind already wandering to the next statement. And the hopes that it won't be quite as stale. End recording. I assume this is another one he was trying to use to prove the extinction? It certainly has something in it. Mankind's trash giving rise to something terrible. And again, fear of the other, inanimate humanoid figures. That's all very... stranger, isn't it? It's never simple, is it? Sort of surprised Peter hasn't rocked up with some more... insights? I haven't seen him around for a while, actually. I mean, it's not like I miss him, but at least he was someone to... Ah. Yeah, that makes sense. Right, fine. Just me on my lonesome for a while, then. Could be worse. Peaceful, at least. I don't miss all the shouting. <laughs> Even if it were... 
Wait. Excuse me. Excuse me, this area's off limits to the public. Sorry? You can't be here, it's not allowed. Oh, sorry, um, Melanie told me to wait for her here. Oh, you... you here for Melanie? Yeah. Georgie. <clears throat> sorry. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't realise. I'm, I'm sure she's around here somewhere. You must be Martin. Y yeah. Has Melanie been talking about me? Oh, um... John used to go on about you a lot. Oh. Oh, wait, wait I thought Melanie Georgie and John Georgie were... Oh, it's same, same Georgie. Oh. Ah, ah, so you and John... Aren't really talking anymore. Right. Why not? Excuse me? Why aren't you talking? Um, because I think he's going to destroy himself. And anyone who lets him get too close. And I don't want that to include me. Or Melanie. Maybe he just needs some help. I did help him. As much as I safely could. But he just carried on anyway. Yeah, and he'll do I realised if I kept trying, it was going to hurt me more than I was willing to accept. Well, sometimes helping people hurts. Sure, but that doesn't mean everything painful helps. Sometimes people have problems that will wreck you long before you can make a dent in them. And some people don't want help, they just want other people suffering with them. John doesn't want that. He doesn't know what he wants. And from the sound of things, he's run out of time to figure it out. It's easy to pass judgement from the outside. One more reason to stay on the outside. And, and, and what, you think Melanie's worth saving? It's not about worth. But yeah, she's actually trying to get well. So I'm going to help her. This place isn't a sickness. No, I think it's worse. Look, we're all just trying to do the right thing. Maybe. Look, life forces you to make hard decisions. But I can never trust someone who goes around looking for hard decisions to make. And what do you mean by that? Well, jumping on a grenade is only heroic if you weren't the one who actually threw it. That's not what's happening. Okay. It's still not something I want any part of. Well... Lucky for you, we're fully staffed, so... Hey, you ready? Oh, uh, yeah. Whenever you are. Who were you talking to? Oh, I well, was, um... Huh. No one, apparently. <sighs> yeah. This place will do that to you. Come on. Sure. The lonely is possibly the most insidious of the powers, I believe. Certainly it is the one that most delights in having you do its work for it. Even the spiders seem to have a hard time matching it for sheer seductiveness. Time to yourself, self-care, putting yourself forward, not being a burden on those you care about. It doesn't even need to tell you any lies just waits for the lies you tell yourself. We're all well aware that with Peter Lucas in charge of the Institute, it's a very real danger to all of us. We are trying. Daisy, Basira and I, we don't leave the Institute much anymore, so we do spend a lot of time together. It's not that easy, though. When everyone has so many walls, so many defences... Sometimes you can feel lonely even when you're in the same room. But it's better than the alternative. And at least none of us are suffering alone. Martin's got it the worst, of course. But it still seems to be his choice. And I have to trust that he knows what he's doing. Still feeling weak. Restless. I want to be proactive, but there hasn't... That hasn't been going quite so well for us lately. Oh, uh, <clears throat> Come in, Melanie. John, have you got a moment? Uh, of course, I was just, um... Having a statement. Oh, uh, an, an old one? W yes, an old one. I'm not... I'm doing my best. Sure. What do you want? Uh... I just wanted to talk to you about, well, um, my 
career, uh, I guess. Uh, my uh, position in the archives. I see. Look, I'm not going to do my job anymore. I am not sure I follow. You know we we can't quit. We've all tried. I didn't say I was going to quit. I said I'm not going to do my job. No researching, no filing, no field trips. Nothing that is going to help the Institute in any way. I'll still be around. I just... I can't be a part of this anymore. If if I get sick, I get sick. And, and if I die... Why? Because this place is evil, John. And so doing this job, helping it out, even in small ways, is in some way evil too. Every time we try to use it to do good, it just seems to make everything worse. And and I will not be a part of that anymore. What about the unknowing? We, we saved the world. Did we? I, I mean, I, I think it was the right thing to do, but how many people were killed to do it? We, we weren't even a neutral party. We did it as agents of the eye because Elias told us to. And, and then you put him in jail? Martin put him there. And, and, and he's still doing harm. You ever think that maybe this whole ritual business is just an excuse and that we're all part of some huge, miserable fear machine? I've considered the possibility. Right. Well, if I'm just another cog. Uh, maybe I can't leave the machine, but from this moment, I I'm not turning. I'm jammed. Did your therapist suggest this? Not, not exactly. She's just helped me work through some things I've been thinking for a while. Uh, she doesn't know the details. Just that I'm in a bad contract situation working somewhere pretty awful. She thinks I work for the Tories. God. Melanie, could you... Could you describe your therapist for me? <laughs> what? You think I wouldn't notice if she had cobwebs down her face? No. That's it, isn't it? You... You really think I'm so stupid I wouldn't have noticed if my therapist was some kind of monster? I just... It was a worry. Right, right. Okay, I know that is why I ruined my first four sessions and almost torpedoed the chance at a genuinely really good therapist because I was so paranoid that she was going to turn out to be some something trying to manipulate me. But no, she's not full of spiders or made of wax or wearing the therapist's skin or whatever. She's just a well-trained professional who I am paying to help me. Okay. It's just the web can be subtle, you understand? And? For all you know, its plan is to paralyse you with indecision, leaving you sitting here, terrified that everything you do is somehow all part of its grand plan. And who do you think that fear's going to feed? Yes, well, you are not the first to make that point. Look, I didn't come here for a fight. I just wanted to let you know what was going on. If you need me, I'll be trying to get Daisy drunk. Good luck. It only ever happened once in 2006. She drank it. Sorry. Didn't mean to. Sure. See you around. Oh. Hello. Hmm. Excuse me, sir, you... Uh, sorry, you can't actually be here. Oh, uh, not to worry. I seem to be doing all right so far. No, I, I mean, this area is actually off-limits to the public, so... And if... quite right, too. Goodness. The things they could learn here. Turn your hair white, eh? <laughs> Best to keep them out, I say. <laughs> Who are you? Did Peter send you? Uh, you must be Martin. 
goodness. He was not exaggerating. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, come now. Don't be like that. Let's start over. Simon. Simon Fairchild. Peter asked me to look in on you and have a small chat. Well, a big chat, really. Answer all those nagging questions. Simon Fairchild. <laughs> Wait, Simon Fairchild as in... As in all those people who said I did horrible things to them and their loved ones? Yes. They have been in, haven't they? I'd hate to think I'm underrepresented in here. Not when Peter tells me that that bone fellow has at least half a dozen. No, no, no. Not, not at all. You've sent plenty of people our way. Brilliant. So, shall we get started? So, sorry, I'm still not entirely clear what's going on. What are you doing here? I see. I suppose it was a bit much to expect him to have filled you in on everything already. I mean, in many ways, that's the point. Right. So, you've been working with Peter for a while now, correct? Sure. And he's been promising you answers to all those difficult questions. Uh, I mean, sort of. Well, that's me. What? Yes, well, you have to understand how it is with Peter. He finds talking to people directly very difficult. Especially explaining the more, um, esoteric side of things. Charming chap, I'm sure you'll agree. Absolutely lovely. But even if you can convince him to actually give you a straight answer, he's just not that good at actually putting these things into words. Something to do with his upbringing, I think. I'm pretty sure he was homeschooled, you know. So what? He sends you to answer questions because he doesn't want to? Precisely. And you do it? Why? Is that your first question? Is there a limit? Only until I get bored. And that does tend to come more quickly these days. Uh, OK, OK then, sure, sure. First question then. Why are you helping Peter? Don't you serve different, you know, fears? Well, now... See, that's actually two questions. The answer to the first is simple. I lost a bet. And this is how the good captain chooses to use that. The second is... Sort of? I mean, yes, if you want to get technical, he serves the one alone and I serve the falling titan, but those two are a lot closer than you might imagine. After all, the larger the space you find yourself alone in, the more isolated you feel. And being aware of how lonely you are can make anywhere feel more empty. Exactly. I've actually been toying with the idea of trying to do something with the scale of humanity itself. You know, emphasise all that overpopulation nonsense, but honestly it just doesn't ring true for me. We're all just so tiny and pointless, you see. It's hard to really get past it. Also, I worry it might be straying into territory that emboldens our potential new rival. The extinction? The very same. Peter said you'd have a lot of questions about that one. I do. How are new powers born? Mm, don't know. How soon could it attempt its ritual? No clue. How do we stop it? Can't help you. Could you at least try? No, 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 you're right, of course. The thing you have to remember is that no one actually knows how these things work. Not really. There's always been plenty of theories, of course, and over a century or two you do start to get an intuitive feel for it, but there's really no hard and fast rules. The powers or entities or fears or whatever you want to call them are bound up in emotion, in feeling. How they exist, what they can do, how they interact with the world, it, it all makes about as much logical sense as a nightmare. Which is to say, there is a certain sort of emotional logic to it all. Things feel like they flow together in a way that makes sense. But if you try to stop and do the maths, then it all comes apart, at least in my experience. When is a new power born? Well, when does it feel like its birth would be right? When enough creatures suffer a terror of it that feels distinct, that feels truly its own, then it would probably feel right for it to emerge into its own. Or perhaps there's a ritual. If it feels right to enact some sort of birthing ceremony, some apocalyptic midwifery. And how close is it, do you think? Hard to be sure. Peter thinks very close indeed, what with all the current hubbub, and I'm inclined to agree. You don't sound worried. That's because we disagree on exactly how bad it will be. Peter seems convinced that the extinction is different, that its actual birth will be as bad or worse as another power fully manifesting. 
He believes its advent will be heralded by all sorts of disasters and catastrophes, and global upheavals and whatnot, that kind of thing. Sounds like a rich feeding ground. Well, exactly. Peter, however, seems to think that it will upset the balance that we all have an awful lot invested in. And he's not at all certain the world as we understand will come out the other side. And let me guess. You think he can't see the big picture? I see why he likes you. It's all a matter of perspective, you see. My patron has gifted me with, quite frankly, an absurdly long life. An appropriate gift and one that serves to provide a certain distance from things. Of course, a paltry few centuries is nothing, really, but it's more than most get. And even in that brief time, I've seen all sorts of ebbs and flows to the balance of things. Do you know when the last ritual I attempted was? I I don't know, that space station? Oh, goodness, no, that's the future, my boy. But no, it was 1853, the height of the aquarium mania. All over the Empire, people were starting to understand the depths of the terrible unknown below the ocean. And I thought that was a rich vein to be tapped. Even bothered old Hawley into helping me design a special diving bell for the ritual. I called it the Awful Deep, and between you and me, I was rather proud of myself. So why didn't it work? Because it wasn't a very good idea. The fear wasn't out there, not like I hoped it was. It all sort of fizzled. Also, a hunter broke in and destroyed the mechanism, sent me and all my sacrifices plummeting to the bottom of the ocean. I don't see your point. My point is... You know, I've quite forgotten. I've just not been doing much recently. It's not a good time for perspective, you see. The world all feels too small these days. I used to do a lot with religion, but it's just not got the same conceptual scope as it used to. Honestly, I'm pinning most of my long-term hopes on space. But that's at least a hundred years away. Assuming the extinction doesn't derail everything. Which is why I'm happy helping Peter. But if it does... Then I'll either be dead, which would be fine, or I'll adjust. It doesn't scare you? Martin, taken on a cosmic scale, we've never even been alive. Not in any way that might register. I mean, if this dreadful little planet had a fractionally different orbit and life had never even started here, then ultimately, nothing of any real importance would have changed. I think our experience of the universe has value. Even if it disappears forever... What a lonely way to look at things. Which makes sense, I suppose. So what do you do, then, if if the world is pointless and your god is so weak right now? I have a good time. And do my best to avoid the drama. It's all been getting a bit much over the last few decades. I blame the number of people. From a raw numbers point of view, it's getting very busy. More minds equals more fear, after all. I thought you said that the maths doesn't work. Oh, you are a quick one. So maybe I'm wrong. But crucially, I suspect a lot of the other servants and creatures out there have a similar idea. Probably why they're all in such a rush to make their own attempts. You make it sound like the the entities don't even know what they're doing. I have no idea if they're doing anything at all. If they're even capable of doing things. I know that most of their servants are simply doing their best to interpret and serve something that is almost definitively inconceivable. You can't be serious. All right. Let's try one of those analogies Peter finds so annoying. Um, imagine you are deaf, but every night you hear the most beautiful music in your dreams, and your every waking thought is consumed by trying to reproduce that music. Oh, you're mute as well, in this analogy, or at least you can't sing. And you need to invent the idea of a musical instrument from scratch. Everyone else is also deaf and mute, and, um... Yes, yes, I think I get it. Yes, well, the point is, most of us are trying so desperately to recreate our own dream symphony that we bring an awful lot of our own baggage into the mix. What about the monsters? What monsters? Things like my... Um, the the distortion. I thought they were part of the entities themselves, extensions. Surely they know what's going on. Honestly, I think they have it a lot worse than we do. Imagine being a hand that can conceive of itself, having impulses shot through you, being moved and clenched by some unseen mind, but never knowing the reasoning behind your own actions, or even if you're just some thoughtless reflex. Sounds horrid. So, So if no one's ever actually communicated with their patron, how do you know they even want rituals? 
How does anyone know if they could ever even work? We don't. And honestly, <laughs> the idea that this is all some grand cosmic joke, thousands of us running around spreading horror and sabotaging each other pointlessly while these impossible, unknowable things just lurk out there, feeding off the misery we cause, I find that interpretation quite appealing. But... I still hear the music in my dreams. Hmm. Who are you? No. No. Who were you? Originally. No one you would have heard of. No great historical figure or atrocity monger. I've been Simon Fairchild about um, 80 or 90 years, maybe. For business purposes, mainly. By which I mean I was bored of not being wealthy. So I made some arrangements and sent Mr. Fairchild on a very long fall. I could go into details, but without a certain amount of knowledge of 1930s tax practices, it wouldn't mean very much to you. And... And how did you get started with it all? Did you, did, did you just look up at the sky one day and fall head over heels in love? Sort of. Actually. Except it wasn't the actual sky, it was a painting. I was apprenticed, you see, under Tintoretto. Dreadful man, but a decent artist. He was fascinated, you see, with the human figure. He found most of the rest of the work dreadfully dull. So he'd always delegate a lot of it to us. He had a particular distaste for painting the sky, and I was always the one he called on to do them. Days, weeks I would spend focusing so intently on these patches of clear sky or swirling cloud at the top of his latest self-proclaimed masterpiece. And gradually it sort of, um, drew me in, until it seemed to dwarf the rest of the work. Every stroke of the brush felt larger than my entire existence. And when I finally lost my footing, well... I should, of course, have fallen to the floor of the church, broken my neck, but that blue painted sky welcomed me with open arms, and I never looked back. I tried to share it with others, not just as sacrifices, but they often find it difficult to keep up with the, um, velocity I tend to live at. They tend to get left behind, and I suppose it doesn't help that I can't bring myself to see any of them as anything other than trivial. Hmm. No wonder I'm so sympathetic to the lonely. You know, this really is a place for self-discovery, isn't it? <laughs> Statement ends, I suppose. Uh, I'm sorry? Oh, nothing, just my own hubris. I should have known. When I came here, I said to myself, Simon, I said, you're going to answer this young man's questions, but you're not going to give the watcher a statement. You're better than that. But it's a hard one to resist, isn't it? You get in the flow of talking about yourself, and it all just tumbles out. It does seem like it. <laughs> well, this has been fun. Now, if we're about done... We're not. Sit back down. Bold. <laughs> I like it. You said you were here to answer my questions for Peter, but so far you've told me basically nothing of any use. The big answers are rarely helpful. Then let's try some smaller ones. Is Peter attempting a ritual? Not in the sense that you're used to. Him and his family made their play a few years ago and they failed. I'm sure he'd like me to explain it, but I think he can do that one himself. How honest has he been with me? About which part? Protecting the others. I think he tried. I suspect he may have slightly exaggerated his abilities when you first made the deal, but he's certainly expended a reasonable amount of influence and resources to follow through. But, but that was never the end game, was it? He just wanted me on side long enough to rope me into his, his plans for the extinction. Do you really need me to answer that one? Fine. So why me? What's his plan? Why not get the others involved? He is what he is, Martin. For a creature of the lonely, the urge is always to isolate. Never to communicate or connect. I suspect that's why he's so keen on wages. It allows him a framework for cooperation that doesn't risk any sort of intimacy. As for his plan, I don't know the details. But I believe there's something in the Institute that he thinks can help his cause. And he needs me to use it? Presumably. From what he said, it must be powerfully aligned to the Watcher. If he wishes to use it, it would need someone already touched by the eye. And if he wants to control that someone... They need to serve the lonely. Quite right. Anything else? How do you feel about this? You might need to be a tad more specific. All of it. 
Peter's plan, the extinction, me? I think... I think Peter is taking a rather large but calculated gamble. Not just on you, but on a lot of things. If it works, he'll be in a very strong position. And if he fails, it won't be all that bad. You don't think it'll be the end of the world? Oh, it very well might be, but life has continued through dozens of apocalypses already. Ice ages, pandemics, calamities, extinctions. The only reason this one feels special is because, well, it's happening to you. And that's the sort of solipsism that tends to come with loneliness, in my experience. So, my feeling is that I'll help out where I can. But ultimately, if this Armageddon comes off, then so be it. Either billions suffer and life goes on, or billions suffer and life doesn't. In the grand scheme of things, it's all much of a muchness. Right. Sorry. Too big picture? I get that a lot. No, it's... Thank you. This has... actually been quite helpful. I'd say any time, but honestly, if you see me again, I may just throw you off something for a joke. How do you feel about roller coasters? Uh, neutral. Oh, you're no fun. Who was that? Basira, please, I don't have time for Oh, no, you don't. Basira, let go. I don't think so. Three weeks I've been waiting to catch sight of you, and now I find you chatting with Simon Fairchild. No, you're not pulling your little vanishing act on me. How did you know about... Yeah, John's not the only one who listens to statements. It's none of your business. No? Because it seems to me like you're panning around with two very dangerous people right around the time you're cutting all of us out. That makes me worried. Makes me suspicious. Tell me I'm wrong. You're wrong. So what's going on then? Talk to me. It's complicated. What? They're just here out of the goodness of their hearts. Helping you save the world from extinction. You know about that? Yeah, John found the tapes you made for him. Shh, shh, shh. Found a stash of them a while ago. I made sure he shared with the class. Well, there you go then. John may be going through a whole, we have to trust Martin thing, but I'm not. As far as I can see, you're either compromised or you're being played. And I want to know which. I didn't know John had listened to them already. Well, he has. He seems to think you'll come to him when you need him. I think you're feeding him what he needs to hear so he doesn't bother you. Look, I don't have time for this. I don't like that I have to work with Peter any more than you do, and I didn't know that Simon was involved until today. But I would hope that you and John understood the importance of preventing an apocalypse. I guess I'm just a bit burned out on the end of the world. Yeah, well, that's your problem. And if you really think this whole extinction thing is it, why not come to us for help? I can't. Peter's the one with the plan, and it needs me to be alone. And you don't see anything suspicious of about that? Of course I do, but it might be the only way, and so far at least he's been honest with me. Awful, but honest. I need to do this. For everyone. You're not expecting to come out of this, are you? I'll do what I have to. If I'm right, no one else needs to get hurt. Okay. You want to do whatever grand sacrifice you think is going to save everyone? Go ahead. But you'd best be sure you're not just playing their game. I know what I'm doing. We'll see. Don't make me regret this. Yeah. Don't tell John. Please. Fine. I can't promise he won't just know it, though. How is he? Hungry. But he's keeping it together. That's good. Can I go now? Sure. I cannot tell how much of the change that comes over someone when they are taken by one of the fears is a direct product of their influence, 
and how much is their own mind, desperately contorting itself to accept and justify the awful things they find themselves drawn to doing. I have read many statements now by those who are changing, who are becoming something else, and few, if any of them, seem entirely rational, entirely the people that they were before. Oh, how can I tell, I suppose? My job is to view people at their lowest, their most fearful and unstable moments. Perhaps there is less change there than I imagine. Certainly, I don't feel different. I have no desire for pseudo-religious philosophizing or delighting in the suffering of those I harm. Then again, I suppose I'm hardly in the best position to judge. Perhaps to anyone listening to these tapes I sound remarkably similar to Hezekiah, or to Manuela, or to Jane. Hello, John. Been a while since you've been down here. I didn't come here to see you. Oh, come now. I'm sure I'm more interested in company than the late Jane Prentice. It's all that's left of her now, apart from a jar of ashes in my desk. Just a circle of rotten stone on an otherwise unremarkable wall. More of a legacy than some people get. There's going to be a gate, I think. A hole that she rotted into the corruption itself. Maybe the start of a ritual. Hmm. Not exactly impressive, is it? Less complex, certainly. But I think that's the thing about... What did Elias call it? Filth. I don't think it really plans much. It just starts to grow wherever it can get a foothold, and if no one stamps it out in time, game over. How clumsy. Though I suppose it has a certain charm. I've been wondering what they were doing down here. The worms must have been down here for weeks, months maybe, spreading, growing. They could have spread all the way through these tunnels, but they didn't. They didn't find Leitner down here, didn't find Gertrude's body, didn't find whatever else is here. It is a maze. One of the reasons I like it. Hmm. I can't see things properly here. I thought it was just me, something interfering with my connection to the eye, but I'm wondering. Maybe it affects everything else. Like this place is some kind of universal blind spot. Everyone gets lost down here. What a fascinating idea. Although some of us are always lost in a sense. Wait, are you saying you can navigate it? Not exactly, but my door has been part of these tunnels for some time now. What's it hiding? What's in the middle? A delightful surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not why you're here, is it? Yeah. I've been thinking a lot about Jane. She was the first, you know. The first I actually encountered like like us she seemed so inhuman like everything she used to be was stripped away and now I wonder how much of her was still in there how much did she choose to be what she was I read her statement she was she was scared I assumed she'd been possessed completely against her will, but now I'm not even sure that's possible. It is astounding the sort of thing you're willing to choose, given an unpleasant enough alternative, isn't it? How much of willpower is just safety, comfort by another name, the option to choose and be fine? Hungry, are we? That's not... I haven't done anything... Yet. I feel like if I don't, I might die, fade away into nothing. Do you know that? 
No. But I, I can't die. They need me. Come on, John. No excuses. They don't need your protection. What? Are you going to look after them? And how would I do that? You eat things as well. They have to open the door, Arkvist. I can't just push them in. Oh? Huh? You've got hands. Sharp enough to pull out worms, kill a few old men, maybe stab an overeager archivist. But my physicality is as much an illusion as everything else about me. Think of me as a bear trap, not a sword. But we're not talking about me, are we? When does it stop? What? The guilt. The misery. All the others I've met, they've been cold, cruel. They've enjoyed what they do. When does the eye make me monstrous? <laughs> Why would it ever do that? I, I don't... When has your guilt or your sadness or your hand-wringing ever actually stopped you from doing what it wants? I, I have not been taking statements. You've sworn off other people's trauma for now. Because you're caught. Because continuing would endanger you. But other than that, when has your discomfort ever actually stopped you walking the path of the beholding? I don't know. Even if it were capable of doing so, what possible reason would the I have to change how you feel when it makes no difference to your actions? Helen was like you at first. She felt such guilt overtaking people. Until one day she realised she wasn't going to stop doing it. So she chose to stop feeling guilty. Fine, I get it. My feelings mean nothing to it. Not true. They carry a certain flavour, a seasoning. I see. <laughs> I am enjoying our time together. Well, you know my advice already. Cheerio, John. Enjoy your brooding. I swear, I almost find the cult dedicated to the dark powers of fear easier to understand than the more mundane sort. At least they have some consistency. This, well, the corruption at work if I had to guess, though with unsettling echoes of uh, fleshliness. I suppose I... Wait. Oh, uh... <clears throat> yeah, uh, I think, um, I think you should probably get down here. Hello, lad. You miss us. I... Sit. <laughs> Down. Well, we check if you're still human enough to bleed. <laughs> You've got something of ours. Someone. Took him right from under our noses. In our own house. Well, I call that rude, don't you? Jerry wasn't yours. You had no oh, right to... You hear that, Julia? Jerry. Sounds like you've got pretty chummy. Where is he? Gone. What do you mean, gone? I can ask you again, son. I burned the page. Released him. On that right noble of you. Proper humanitarian. So, let me get this straight. We take you in, protect you from the thing that's hunting you. Spare your life, even though you're no better. Help you, give you access to one of our most valuable resources, and you steal it from us. Piss off back to England, and then burn it. That's just inconsiderate. He asked me to. Oh, really? You always do what evil books tell you to, do you? Gotta say, I'm disappointed. Genuinely thought you were different. But you're just another monster. Not even worth the chase. You want the honours, old man? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> Get away from him. <sighs> What's this? You got yourself a watchdog. Well, more of a lapdog. Scrawny, isn't she? I said get back. Malnourished, I'd say. How long since you last tasted blood? You think you can take us both? I'd enjoy it. 
start with the old bastard. He's slower, doesn't guard his neck. And you worry about him too much, don't you? I go for him, you get sloppy, predictable, sure. Or I slit your little bookworm's throat. Do it. Then give me a chance to finish off your dad. I'm not her father. Not by blood, maybe. Shut it! Come on, Julia. What? There's no rush. We've got all the time in the world. Besides, this place is just full of monsters. She can't guard them all. Fine. Thank you. I don't know. Daisy! Are you all right? Don't touch me. Christ, he was right. I, I didn't... When did you get so I'm thin? I'm not. It's fine. It's the hunt, isn't it? Without it... I'm fine. Just haven't been hungry. I'm strong enough. Clearly. They're not gone yet. We could still get them. Daisy, no. It's like you say. Don't listen to the blood. Listen to the quiet. Even so, if it's having this much of an effect on I'm you... I'm not going back. I can't let it in again. But it... What if it kills you? <laughs> Always said I was dedicated to justice. Daisy, it's not... You can't think like that. John, do you have any idea how much damage you can do if you're a police officer who wants to hurt people? How much the system will protect you? I managed to keep most of it from Basira, but... That wasn't you, that was the hunt. We were the same. You'd never known anything different? Because I never wanted to. Well, that time trap was good for one thing. Thinking. And I did a lot of it. I've made my choice. Okay. So what do we do when they come back? I don't know. Come on. Hmm. We'd better tell Sarah. Hmm. I've, uh, I've been doing a lot of thinking after what happened with Daisy last week. About what I can do. What I am. What feels right. I found a... I went back to a li uh, Peter's office to that box of tapes, started rifling through. And I started to try and pay attention to the ones I wasn't drawn to. The tapes I instinctively wanted to discard. There was one, this one, that my hand pulled back from. I dropped it twice when I went to pick it up. Even now, I'm struggling to press play. I am the avatar of awful knowledge and revealed secrets. So what does it not want me to know? Right. No use putting it off further. When he opened his eyes, he of course saw nothing, but he heard her breathing, slow and steady and focused, and he immediately knew that she was finally going to kill him. When the garden shears plunged into his chest, he was surprised by how little actual pain there was, just the sudden feel of moisture on his chest, and the realisation that his body was growing weak, fading away. He wished she would say she was sorry she was doing this, that she loved him, that she would miss him, that he knew better, and his final thought was a gentle sadness at how little he was surprised. And so Eric Delano ended. Eric? Gertrude, I... What am I doing here? Mary, she gave me your page. She... Oh. Yes. Well, I'm sorry. Wasn't even hard for her, was it? Handing me over? 
No sign of regret? No. No. I'm sorry, Eric. I know this must be hard. I just read your death. I didn't realize it had been quite so... Uh... You should have seen what she did to my body afterwards. Did you? Oh, yes. She bound me first and then made me watch. Don't really know why. Wasn't really in the best state of mind to ask. Maybe she just wanted some company. While she disposed of your body? God, it was a mess. I mean, part of me kind of suspected she'd killed before, but clearly she hadn't done it enough to be a decent hand at chopping up and dumping bodies. <laughs> she was having a real bad time of it. My legs were all over the shop. Would probably have been funny if it hadn't been me. What's it like, being bound to the book? I don't know how to describe it. Never was great with words. Bad. It feels bad. All the time. I know that I'm not really Eric. I'm just a memory someone wrote down. It hurts most of the time. I don't like it. But you're still here. I suppose. Mary used to get me out to bounce ideas off of, talk through her thoughts and theories. Never listened to me, obviously, but nothing new there. Well, it's good to see you, I suppose. You too. You got old. Better than being dead. Fair enough. To be honest, I'm impressed more than anything. Hard to get old in this business. You either die or you, uh, stay young. How did Mary look? <laughs> she got old too. suppose that makes sense. And Jerry? Have you seen my son? No. I've never met him, I'm afraid. Mary talks of him a lot. Well, she seems very proud. That's not as reassuring as you think it is. I see your point. Why did she give me to you? I... I don't know. She seemed to think it was a gift. Oh, charming. She said she had one final mystery to explore with the book. Oh. Oh. You know what that means, right? I have a pretty strong suspicion. Yes. <laughs> what? I was just thinking. Five years as a husband. God knows how many as her possession. And she just couldn't stand the thought of being bound in the same book as me. Hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. It doesn't feel great. But being dead, I suppose you don't feel things quite as strongly. It's all a bit flat. I'm aware of the heartbreak, but I don't know if I actually feel it. It's strange, really. Yes. Yes, it sounds it. So, what now? I'm not entirely sure. I was probably going to burn you, if you're amenable to the idea. Yes. Yes, I think that would be for the best. I'm just trying to figure out if there was a reason she gave you to me. The way she was smiling, as if she was handing over a secret. I don't know. Do you have any questions? Any unfinished business? Huh, of course. When she killed you, there were plenty of outstanding cases and such, but nothing that would still be relevant. Sorry? What do you mean? Well... You were working on quite a few statements when she killed you. Gertrude, I left the archives months before she killed me. What? No, that's... that's not possible. Of course. They didn't tell you. Why would they? Mary probably thought it was funnier if you didn't know, and Wright would have preferred you not to know. How is he, by the way? James. He died about twelve years ago. Elias is head of the Institute now. Elias? Elias Bouchard? Seriously? Oh, he's changed a lot. Must have. So, what did they not want me to know? 
I quit. You... I'm sorry. You quit? Yeah. I figured out how. I... I just assume... How? Well, that's it, isn't it? I suppose that's why she gave me to you. One final screw you to the eye. Eric, how did you quit? Eric? Sorry, I just... <laughs> I don't mean to be a dick, but... Well, it's been a long time since I've had any sort of... Leverage, I guess? <laughs> just a little bit of power. It's kind of nice. Are you going to tell me? Thinking about it. Think harder. You know, you were never actually that nice to me when I worked for you, Gertrude. Not like Michael or Emma. Eric! What? Are you going to threaten me? Look at me. The best I can currently hope for is to be burnt to ash. I'm going to tell you. Just... Maybe there's a price. What do you want? I don't know. I haven't had a chance to think. Eric! Fine, I... I want two things. I'm listening. I want you to find my son. If Mary is... If she's gone, or worse... I want you to make sure he's all right. <laughs> I'm not exactly a mother figure. You could hardly do worse than her. Fine. But I don't know what growing up with Mary has done to him. If he's gone rotten, I can't promise anything. I understand. I suppose he might be useful. Oh, sentimental as ever. And the second thing? I want to make my statement. Is that really necessary? I don't want to disappear on her terms. Or yours. I want to speak my piece, have it recorded. Oh, fine. Tape's running. Subject is Eric Delano, recorded 21st of July, 2008, regarding... What else? Me, Mary and the archives. As you wish. Begin whenever you're ready. Well, thank you for that. I'll make sure it's stored somewhere safe. Right. Something wrong? I just... I thought it would be more of a relief. Oh. I'm sorry it wasn't as cathartic as you were hoping. But we had an agreement. Yeah, I know. So, how did you do it? How did you quit the archives? It was actually really simple. Not easy, but simple. You'll kick yourself when I tell you. Okay. You were almost there, you know. With your theory that James could watch us through any eye, even an illustration. So what did you do? How did you sever that link? My God. I left to avoid dragging my family, my son, into this life. To try and look after him. But Mary decided that a newly blinded husband was simply too much of a burden. Did you need to do anything special? Any ritual or...? Just as long as they're useless. I went the extra mile, destroyed them completely, but... I'm sure you'll find something... neater. A strong acid precisely applied? That sounds more your style. If you decide to do it, that is. I, I don't know. No. It's not an easy sacrifice to make, is it? I still have work to do. Don't you always? Yeah. Anyway, I think I'll probably do some research of my own before the rather extreme step of blinding myself. It's the only way. Trust me. I tried them all. Yes. I remember. So, was there anything else? No. No, I, I don't think so. Then if you don't mind, I think I'd like to go away now. Yes. 
I think that's probably for the best. Your certain burning will work. If it doesn't, I'm sure you'll figure something out. Then let's get it over with. If you see Mary again, tell her... No. I guess there's not really anything else to say. Right. Hello, again. Oh, sorry, pal. <laughs> A false alarm this time. Oh, unless... Peter! Look, Peter... Martin! Are you... John! God, don't do that! Sorry, I, I just... No, it's fine. I... You just surprised me. That's... Jesus, are you alright? You... you look like hell. Oh, right, I... Um... Kind of weak, hungry, uh, I guess, sort of. I I've been trying to avoid being um, sticking to old statements. Thank you for your little intervention, by the way. Look, I wouldn't have had to if you had Yes, no, I know, I'm sorry. I, that didn't come out right. Honestly, thank you. It's been hell, but I, I did need to hear it. Oh, um, uh, good. Are the others helping? Oh, They've been keeping a very close eye on me. But that's not important. No, well, it is important, but it's, it's, it's not why I'm here. John, I... calm down. What do you want? I know. I know what you said, but I just... I think I've found a way for us to leave the Institute. Okay. Yeah. But it, it's... It's pretty... Drastic. What, well, you've got to gouge your eyes out or something? Fuck off. Right. Uh, right. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, like, like permanently? Uh, or? I, I don't know. I mean, I suppose. If your vision comes back, the beholding probably does as well. But probably. But it's not like it's easy to only blind yourself temporarily anyway. I... Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Have you told the others, or...? No, you're the first. Why? Because... Because I, I trust you. I, I'm trying to think about what to do, and I... Well, if I did try this, I... I don't want to do it alone. Well, we could leave here. You and me. Escape. John, don't do this. Do what? Make it my decision. I'm not... No, I mean, could you, could, you, could you even survive at this stage? Is there anything else keeping you alive? I, I don't know. I don't know. But maybe it's worth it. The risk, you, you and me, together getting out of here. One way or another. John. No. No, of course. This was stupid. You have your own plans going on, don't you? Just... Look, I need to see this thing through with Peter to the end. If if what he's saying is even half true, I need to be there. But what if you don't? I mean, we could just leave. I mean, whatever their plan is for me, I am damn sure that doing that isn't it. I could derail everything. We could derail everything and then just leave. <laughs> what? It's nothing, it's just... It's just ironic. That's all. Martin. <laughs> Who are you kidding, John? You're not going to do any of that. I, I, I could. But you won't. That's why you came to me, isn't it? You know I can't do it, not now. You don't want to blind yourself. You don't want to die. What you want is a reason to not do those things. So, you come to me. Well, you're welcome. Because I can't follow you on this one. The lonely's really got you, hasn't it? You know, I think it always did. Maybe. Well, I'll be here. If you ever do need me. I hope so. Just don't wait too long, OK? If you haven't already.
Yeah. Yeah. Any luck? No. If they're still around, they're staying hidden. Not like there's any shortage of places to lay low. Hmm. London's, what, 600 square miles? 607. Whatever. So I guess we're on the lookout for a pair of homeless serial killers now. I'll add it to the list. No sign of Annabelle either. You still on that? You're not. I mean, I don't know how much she can predict or manipulate the future, but I think she's proven she can at least avoid us finding her. Yeah, well, it makes me feel better. I suppose that's something. How's Daisy? I don't know. She's recovered from your little... confrontation. But she's still getting weaker. I'm worried she's... Yeah. Why did you call her and not me? Honestly, I panicked. Her name came up first on my phone. I'm trying to convince her to go after them. To, uh... hunt them. Why? Because I'm not going to lose her. She goes hunting again, you might anyway. And if she doesn't, she might die. Something you're fine with in certain other cases. And something she's made peace with. Because of the guilt she feels over the stuff the hunt made her do. It's not her fault. Earlier, when she was still out of it, I, uh... I... saw some of the things she was talking about. Some of the things she did while she was police. I'm not convinced I disagree with her assessment. Do you want me to tell you? No. No, I don't. You knew, didn't you? You knew the sort of things she did and you let her. No, not exactly. I thought... It's not that simple. It never is. But that doesn't make it okay. None of us are who we were, John. No, I suppose not. In many ways it's simpler now, isn't it? At least now our demons have names. Hmm. Have you thought any more about what I said? Yeah. I don't think I can. Daisy wouldn't come if I didn't, and I'm not leaving her behind. Besides, both of us being blind would be... Anyway, being stuck here isn't exactly her main problem right now. I suppose not. And with those hunters still out there... No, I understand. Just wanted to make sure you knew you had the choice. Yeah. Anyway, I should go check on her. Sure. Do you mind closing the door? Statement time. Hmm. What is the value of a life? Is it something that can be quantified, put down as numbers, good deeds, bad? And when your life, your existence is at the cost of doing harm, what then? I've... <laughs> I've saved the world. The whole world. Does that give me the right to take what I need to survive? I've been reading nothing but these old dry statements for so long I I feel weak like I'm fading away do I restrain myself keep my appetite in check even at the cost of my life or do I try to rationalise what I am like Miss McHugh I find myself hating her her callous self-deception but am I so different Daisy's chosen to resist in her own way, knowing full well it might take her life in the end. Melanie, too. I respect them for it, but I, I don't know if I can follow their path. I suppose I have a way out now. One that wouldn't even kill me. At least, I hope not. And yet, here I am still. Am I a coward? I just... What if they need me? What if? Oh, come in, Melanie. Funny. I was just, uh... How are you? I'm good, actually. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm good. You sound like you've made a decision. I have. Yes. Right. Thanks for telling me, by the way. It didn't look like it was easy for you. It wasn't. 
I don't think, uh, I don't think it wants to lose anyone, but I thought you of all people deserve the option. Yes. But I understand it's a big thing. We'll keep looking. Maybe there's uh, another way we No, can... John. I'm going to do it. I'm quitting. Oh? You're sure you've thought it through? I don't know if we can look after you, you know? Afterwards? You won't need to. I've I've made a few arrangements, and... It's going to be okay. Honestly. I think it is. I I can't be a part of this anymore, and if this is the price, then I think I'm okay to pay it. It's, it's the rest of you I'm worried about. We'll be fine. Always have been. Not always. No. I guess not. Well, if you're sure... I won't be around after this, but I'll, I'll leave details in case you need to get in touch. Um, but... I understand. How are you planning on doing it? <laughs> got, uh, got one of those awls from the book repair supplies up in the library. If it can punch through books, it can punch through, uh, well, it... It should do the trick. No reason to try and make it too complicated. I suppose not. I've left a proper resignation letter on Lucas's desk. It was quite satisfying to write, actually. Almost made me wish it was Elias. <laughs> he would have hated me not serving out my two weeks' notice. <laughs> not sure Lucas even knows who I am. Probably for the best. We'll miss you. Wish I could say the same. Yeah. Do you need any, uh, help? No. I've got this. But if you, um, if you could... In five minutes, I would appreciate it if you could call me an ambulance. Right. Oh, yeah. I was going to read one. Hate for you to miss it. <laughs> you know, I've, I've been wondering about your batteries. Like, could I just take the batteries out each time one of you appears and just have an infinite supply of batteries? I mean, I won't. Don't worry. Don't really have anything that needs them these days. Also... I know there's every chance you don't even have any, and it's just empty and... Well, I'm not really sure that's something I want to confirm. Or I open up your compartment and it's like meat or, or maggots or something. Hmm. Emptiness or maggots. It's kind of the shape of things around here, isn't it? Still, kind of nice to talk to some... thing. It's always quiet these days for me at least I guess I technically have the power to make it not quiet to, to talk to people but like you know I, I also have the power to clean out the fridge and it's still a mess it's not that I don't want to clean fridge it's just some things are just hard anyway I know he's been listening to the tape so I guess I'll have to do I think I still care that he hears my voice it's hard to tell sometimes. How much do I actually care? How much is just feeling that I should care? I'm on my own so much these days, I just wish I didn't like it so much. I mean, if you've got any thoughts, I'd love to hear them. Hmm? No. Didn't think so. That's not what you're here for, is it? No. You want this. Fine. Fine, have it your way, as usual. Another day, another extinction scare. The more things change, I guess. 
I just wish Peter would finally get round to telling me what we're meant to be doing about it. Then I have good news for you. Peter, we have talked about this. In my defence, it is still quite funny. So, what's the news? I think we're finally ready. Great. And does that mean I finally get to know what we're ready for? Yes. Well, for the most part, to a certain degree, you really need to see it for yourself. Peter. You know the tunnels under the Institute? Yes, I remember. Well, there's something at the centre, a... let's call it a device. Now, our biggest problem with the extinction is lack of information. We know it's emerging, but we don't know how or where. And this device will help? Yes. And I'm going to be the one to use it for you? I very much hope so. If you need more time... I don't. Good, because I was going to say there probably isn't any. If it's been down there all this time, how come we haven't found it? John explored the tunnels pretty thoroughly, and Leitner was down there a lot. It's very difficult to reach if you don't know exactly where you're going. And you do? I will. By tomorrow, I should have my hands on a map. And then, we go. Right. Will I be coming back? You're not going to die, if that's what you're asking, but... No. If all goes well, you won't be. How does that make you feel? Nothing. (laughs) Nothing at all. Excellent. I'm so proud of you, Martin. I really don't care. Perfect. Will I be coming back? You're not going to die, if that's what you're asking, but... No. If all goes well, you won't be. How does that make you feel? Nothing. (laughs) Nothing at all. Excellent. I'm so proud of you, Martin. I really don't care. Perfect. (sighs) This tape was left on my desk. I don't know by who, but to my mind there are three options. Martin has left it here to let me know that Whatever the situation is with Peter Lucas, it is entering its final act, and he needs my help. Alternatively, Peter may have left it here to goad me into action, or just to gloat to highlight my helplessness at everything. Or Annabelle Kane is trying to manipulate me into thinking it's one of the other scenarios. Previously, the spiders have made their presence clear when they've sent me... hints. But I can't take that for granted. I don't know what to do. There's a statement with it. It looks pretty recent. First time in a while I've been wary of reading one. Still, I guess... This, uh... This changes things. I think. If Martin found this, read it already, then perhaps he's having second thoughts about about Peter and the extinction. This, this could be a cry for help, his way of asking me to follow him without Peter knowing, or... Or what? I don't understand. Martin's been quite clear he doesn't want my help. Am I just hearing what I want to hear? I need a second opinion, but... Basira and Daisy are out somewhere. They left in a hurry and didn't tell me why. Now their phones are going to voicemail. Maybe they're just on the underground. Probably. That doesn't help me now. I need someone I can trust. No, John, you've done enough. I just need to talk to What her. don't you understand? She mutilated herself to get out of that place, and there is absolutely no way I'm letting you involve her again. Look, is she here or not? She, she said she was staying with you. Yes, she's here. Really? Where's all her stuff? Bedroom. Why? No, I just... Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't realise you were two together. That's because it's none of your business. Now leave. Please, Georgie, it's not... I just need to know I'm not overreacting to something. I need an outside perspective. Sure, well, here's one. Get out of my flat. Uh, Oh, 
what's go what's going on? You you won't be admiral. Hey, hey, easy. It's it's all right. He was just leaving. Melanie. I... John. Yeah, it's me. It's all right, Melanie. John, leave. I'm sorry. I just. It's Martin. John, don't. Please. No, you're right. I'm sorry. Are you all right? Yes, I. I'm um. I'm actually doing okay. That's good. <laughs> My therapist isn't happy about it, you know. Uh, unsurprisingly, tried to have me put away, but they um. They let me come here. It's it's been good for me though. I I feel all right. I'm um. I'm not scared anymore. Melanie, you don't have to do this. It's it's okay. He's welcome as a friend, but that's it. Right. But you're not after a friend, are you, John? I need an ally. Then I can't help you. I suppose not. Okay, you done? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Come on, Melanie, let's get you back to bed. Look after yourself. Both of you. You two? Good luck, I guess. Thanks. Helen. Jonathan. I need... Uh, you said before, you, you knew the tunnels, right? That you'd been uh, part of them? Not my exact words, but close enough. I need to know what's in there. What's at the centre? It's important, Martin. I need to know. Well, that's a shame, because I'm afraid I'm not going to tell you. What? Why not? Because I have a good enough sense of what's going on to know that it will be much more fun without my involvement. <laughs> what? You, you said you were going to help. I am. I don't have time for this. What is it the same? No. We are not playing your game now. Don't forget how sharp I can be, archivist. Perhaps here, now, you're powerful enough to learn what you want from me. But if you try, I promise you I will resist. And only one of us is going to survive the attempt. Uh, fine. Can you take me there? To the centre. I honestly don't know. But I'm not inclined to risk it. Damn you! Run home, John. Find a victim on the way. Chaos is coming and I think you'd best be ready. Just tell me what's going on. Please. Bad things, archivist. Really bad things. <laughs> <laughs> Is everything all right, Martin? Oh, it's fine. Don't particularly like it down here. Ah, yes, of course. Hard to trust the doors, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, well, everyone else seems to these days, so... But she's still the same corridors, I suppose. I'm sure... What was his name? Tim! Uh, Tim would... really rather not talk about it, Peter. Very well. This way. Look, are you sure about that map? I'm pretty certain the tunnels change. Oh, don't worry about that. Ink's practically still wet. Not to mention, if they do change, well, I happen to have something that will change them back. That's a lightener. It is. And the, um, the blood on it? That's lightener too. Right. Do you want to see how it works? Uh, n no, no, I'd really rather you didn't mess no, with it. No, I insist. Watch. Very impressive. I'm reading. Shush. Peter? Peter, there's a... Peter, I think there's something in there. Mm -hmm. I'd stay quiet if I were you. So you finally decided to let me out, John! John! Who's 
there. Who let me out? Don't be shy. I just want to say thank you. All right, have it your way. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some unfinished business. <laughs> That was, um... Yes. Um, it's, it's going to... Make sure everyone's too busy to follow us. They'll be fine. Probably. You could still go help them, if you insist. Very good. Come on. Gone how? Just walked out, as far as we can tell. A couple of guards on duty vanished too. Vanished? How? Just left. Best we can tell, he had some doubt on them. Old friend at the prison let us know. What, and no one thought of that? Arsal could have left at any time, but he just sat there laughing at us. No, no, this, this can't be a coincidence. Coincidence with what? Uh, Martin or someone left me a tape. Him and Peter Lucas are looking for something down in the tunnels. Do you know what? No, he called it a device. When? I, I mean, I don't... I, I mean, now? I guess they could... It can't be a coincidence that this is when Elias chooses to make a break for it. You think he's coming here? You don't? Let's go. I'll get the key. What is this place? The Panopticon of Milbank Prison. Not quite as Smirk originally conceived it, of course. Jonah Magnus made certain adjustments. And it's been down here the whole time. Why do you think this was chosen as the Institute's location when the prison closed? It's a significant site of power for the beholding. From the tower in the center of this room, you can see everything. But there's nothing in the cells. I don't mean the cells, Martin. I mean everything. Come on. Mind your step. This comes from an era before safety rails. But I don't understand. Why are we here? It's quite simple, really. I want to use the powers of this place to learn about the extinction, what it's doing, where it's manifesting, then we can stop it. And you need me for this? Correct. Without a connection to the eye, any attempt to use it would likely end very messily indeed. But thankfully, it just so happens that you hold such a connection. So that's it. Both lonely and watching. You must admit, you're the perfect candidate. I suppose I am. There is, of course, just one other complication. You'll have to dispose of the current occupant. Current? Who is that? Jonah Magnus. His body, at least. Sitting here, watching, binding it all together, growing ever older. If you want to take his place, well... I'll need to kill him. Yes. Don't worry, though. I brought a knife. Where are his eyes? Exactly where they've always been, Martin. Watching over my institute. And you're sure? Yes, I'm sure. It wasn't here before. It's just that there's a lot of tapes around. And I don't keep any of them with the key to the tunnels. It's been left for me. And it says, play me. Kind of suspicious. So Elias left it. Or Martin. Or Peter. Or Annabelle. Fine. Whatever. Could be a distraction. Only one way to find out. We don't have time for this. We don't know that. We've no idea what sort of time frame we're on. I say play it. Thank you. Gertrude. Did you really think I wouldn't notice? I'd rather hoped you'd still be hampered with all the darks business. It's their grand eclipse at the moment, isn't it? <sighs> but I think we've both come to the same conclusion about that. That's why you're here. Yes. Shame, really. I used to be able to torture a building in half the time. <sighs> Age catches us all. Well, almost all of us. Elias. You were the one so insistent on staying human. 
And no doubt that makes my death a lot less complicated. What exactly were you hoping to achieve here? Why not come at me directly instead of burning everything first? I was rather hoping the fire would occupy you while I did just that. I see. How long have you known? About your body. Not long after you took your new host and we had that little chat. Wasn't exactly a huge leap to the Panopticon after that. The hard part was figuring out how to actually reach it. Took me the better part of a decade. So you burn the place down, use it as cover to reach my body, and then we die together. How poetic. Doesn't seem like your style at all. I wasn't actually planning on dying. And how exactly were you planning on achieving that while you're still bound to the... Oh, I see. Very clever. I thought Eric was the only one to figure that little morsel out. Knowledge has a way of surviving. You, of all people, should know that. Quite. It was a good plan, actually. If you hadn't been so complacent about me keeping an eye out down here, probably would have worked. Gertrude's grand retirement. It still might. Just needs a little spark and... I see. So you're finally getting your hands dirty? I must really have caught you off guard. I suppose we both got a little complacent. Fifty years is a long time. End of an era. I'm not really in the mood for nostalgia, Elias. You might have noticed I'm rather busy, so either shoot me or... is. I thought it would hurt more. Pity. Right, so what does that tell us? John? John! Uh, yes, sorry. Right, just, uh, uh, the Panopticon. It's the, um... Design of Millbank Prison based on an all-seeing watchtower. I know. I did the reading. R right. You think that's the device? Uh, yes. And I'd wager that Elias' body... You've gotta be uh, Jonah Magnus, right? I'd say so. And he's been body-hopping like whatever was in Rayner. So is he going to help Peter or, or stop him? If Lucas is planning to take over the Panopticon, can't imagine he wants that to happen. But Elias put him in charge. That doesn't make any... Daisy, are you... Shh. Oh, no. Stay here, both of you. I'll check it out. What are you doing here, Elias? Oh, you needn't worry. Two against one. I couldn't stop you if I wanted to. I just wanted to be here at the end. Can a man not watch his own death? What? 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 How are you even here? Well, Don't let him distract you. Peter. Elias. Both of you, just just shut up. Just give me a second to think. Of course. You can take all the time in the world. Come now, Martin. I would have thought you'd jump at the chance to kill me. That's not... Why wouldn't you help against the extinction? Because I'm a busy man. This has never been my top priority. I don't believe you. That really doesn't matter, I'm afraid. It's the only answer you're going to get. If I... If I do kill you, will the others survive? Elias? Come now, Peter. It's a valid question. And you should have addressed it yourself, really. The short answer is I don't know, Martin. I guarantee it won't be pleasant for them, but I honestly don't know if their ties to the Institute are quite as strong as I may have implied. You, at least, should be insulated from the fallout by your new allegiance. John might be powerful enough to weather it. Melanie's well out of it, so that just leaves Basira and Daisy. And the rest of the Institute, of course, and you can't tell me you care about them. Uh, of course I do! Do you, though? Do you really care about any of them? Or is that worrying just simply an old reflex? Goodness. Peter has done his work well, hasn't he? 
No. The only choice I think that matters is whether you want to kill me or not. I do. I really, really do. Then do it, Martin. We're the same, you and I. We don't need anyone else. Watching from a distance, that's always who you've been. Have you enjoyed it these last few months? Drifting through the archives, unseen, unjudged. You'll like it in there, I promise. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would. Then do it. Kill him and help me save the world. No. Well, looks like two people, an old guy and, and a woman with a scar. Oh god, now? Why now? It's probably not a coincidence. From what I saw, they've been toying with the rest of the Institute, but it won't be long until they're all dead or escaped. And then they're coming here. Right. Okay. Set up by the door. Try and take them when they break through. Right. Do, uh, do I get a gun? You have a fired one. You never taught me! You never asked. Besides, we've got problems enough without- Hello, John. Oh, shit. You gotta be fucking kidding. Go! Shy boy! <laughs> we wanna make a statement. Oh, hello. What have we here? New friends? <laughs> Not new friends? Even better. What the hell is that thing? Do you remember what happened to Sasha? That's the thing that took her. It was trapped in the tunnels, it... Martin. Something's happening down there. If he's down there with Peter, or Elias. Damn it, we need to get down there. Come out, wherever you are. You smell them. Oh, hard to tell over the stick of that thing. They'll follow us. God damn it. John, go. We'll keep them busy. What? No, I... Don't argue. Just go. Just don't die. Go. This might be it. Sierra, didn't think it would end like this. <laughs> you know what? Actually, I think I did. <laughs> Sierra, promise me something. What? No, Daisy, no. Sierra, when this is over, you need to find me and kill me. Promise me. No. No, Daisy, we'll figure something out. Can't hide forever, John. This last month, I, it was always borrowed time. I can't outrun it forever. Daisy, promise me. I promise. Thanks. No, run. Daisy. Run. Aha. There you are. All alone. Like Oh. <laughs> Shit. Martin, what are you doing? I'm saying no. I refuse. Game over. Martin, this is not the time for petulance. There are bigger things at stake here. <laughs> no, I think that was actually the problem. You made the stakes too high. All the little details that didn't add up. It made them more obvious, exaggerated. The extinction is coming. Oh, I'm sure it is. But that's not what this is about, is it? This isn't about saving the world. It's all just some power play against him. I might not know exactly what's going on, but I don't think I want any part of this. However much I want to kill him, I'm out. But you said... Honestly... I mostly just said what I thought you wanted to hear. I see. This is your doing, is it? Hardly. It's not him. It's not anybody. It's just me. Always has been. I... When I first came to you, I thought I had lost everything. John was dead. My mother was dead. The job I had put everything into had trapped me into spreading evil. And I, I really didn't care what happened to me. I told myself I was trying to protect the others, but honestly, 
We didn't even like each other. Maybe I just thought joining up with you would be a good way to get killed. And then John came back and, and suddenly I had a reason. I had to keep your attention on me. Make you feel in control so you didn't take it out on him. And if that meant drifting further away, so what? I'd already grieved for him and if it meant now saving him, it was worth it. When you started talking about the extinction though, you had me actually for a while. But then, <laughs> then you tried to make me the hero. Tried to sell me on the idea that I was the only one who could stop it. And that, that never sat right with me. I mean, I mean look, look at me. <laughs> I'm not exactly a, a, a chosen one. But by then I was in too deep. So I played along, waited to see what your end game was. And here we are. Funny. Looks like I was right the first time. It's probably still a good way to get killed. I warned you, Peter. But you do serve the lonely. Oh, I'm getting there, but if this is the final test or something, then bad luck. The answer's still no. No. No! This isn't fair. Do you have any idea what you've done? You knew he must have Elias, known. Jonah had nothing to do with it. No, that's not... You can't... You've lost, Peter. Admit it. <laughs> he played you like a... Like a cheap whistle. No! Shut up, Peter. It's time. Fine. Great. Now, perhaps one of you then can tell me what I... It won't be that bad, Peter. You'll see. Now, he'll be here soon, so you can leave or... Oh, no. No. I'm not going to make it easy on him. You haven't won yet. Your choice. Just make sure to leave the door open. <laughs> ah, John. I was almost worried. You found your way all right. Yes. Yes, I did. How? Suffice it to say, I called you. What is this place? A complicated question, and time is... What's the panopticon? <laughs> My, you have grown. Yes. A masterpiece, isn't it? Yeah. It is. And that's you, then. Your body. Not anymore. But not really. Although if you harmed it, it wouldn't go well for me. Or any of your friends, for that matter. Maybe it's worth it. Maybe. And I'm sure in another circumstance, you would be more than happy to take your chances for a shot at revenge. But, but for Martin, time is very much of the essence. Where is he? Peter Lucas has him. Cast him into the lonely. And with every passing moment, he gets further away from you. How do I bring him back? From out here? Impossible. You want me to follow him? No, John. You want you to follow him. I simply want you to know that if you do so, you are almost certainly not coming back. To go into the lonely willingly is as good as death. How do I do it? It wasn't too long ago, and I'm sure traces of their passage still remain. Just open your mind. Drink it all in. Know their route, and simply follow it. Very good. Are you scared, John? Yes. Perfect.
Martin! Martin! He doesn't want to see you. Where are you? I'm not here, I'm the archivist. No one is. No one is. It's only you. It's only Fine. Then maybe no one can answer some questions. You've still got time, archivist. Turn around and leave. You've played your part. Now go. What's wrong, Lucas? Afraid of talking face to face? <laughs> of course. Or haven't you been paying attention? Martin! It's odd, really. You each think you're so focused on the other. But how much do you really know each other? How much time have you spent together when not working? Or bickering or fleeing from that latest thing that wants to kill you? So, what are you seeking? The image you've each created of the other? The people you think you love don't exist. Not really. And that's a very lonely place to be. Shut up! Martin! He doesn't want to see you. Then let me hear that from him. Just go. Make me. Unless you can't. The lonely and the eye aren't too far apart, are they? Not really. What good's being alone if you don't know how alone you truly are? Which means... Well, I think you're worried. You know I'll find him eventually, and you know I can find you. Hmm. Thought so. Martin. John? John? I, I'm here. I, I came for you. Why? Why? I thought you might be lost. Are you real? Yes. Yes, I, I, I am. C come on. We've got to get out of here. No. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Why? This is where I should be. This is where I should be. It feels right. Martin, feels don't right. say that. Nothing hurts here. That's it. It's just quiet. It's just quiet. Even the fear is gentle here. Is gentle. This isn't right. This isn't you. It is, though. I really loved you, you know. Loved you. Listen, he, he's done something. Peter's done something to mess with your. Damn it! Martin! Martin! I tried to tell you. He's gone. He's gone. He made his choice. And it wasn't you. It was for me, though. I'm the reason he. I did this to him as much as you. Yes. Suppose you did. Suppose you did. Where are your friends, archivist? Tim and Sasha are dead. Yes. Yes. Daisy and Basira are probably dead. Because of you. Georgie and Melanie have left me. And Martin's gone. You're alone, archivist. The last one standing. I did warn you. I did want you to leave, but perhaps it would be better if you stayed a while. After all, you can't hurt anyone in here. Yes. Yes. Or perhaps you could answer some questions. What? I wouldn't try to leave if I were you. I can see you now. I can find you wherever you go. Fine. It was just a thought. So leave. Not before I get some answers. That's not going to happen. Tell me your story, Peter Lucas. No. Tell me. <coughs> <coughs> Fine. 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 Where do you want to begin? was his prize. What did he get if you lost? Oh, he got you. I, I don't understand. And you won't. Not from me. I'm done. 
tell me. I'm not saying another word. Tell me, or I will rip it out of you. No! Answer my question! No! Leave me alone! Tell me! Stubborn fool. Martin. He's gone, Martin. He's gone. His only wish was to die alone. She was to die alone. Tough. Now listen to me, Martin. L listen. Hello, John. Hello. Listen, I know you think you want to be here. I know you think it's safer and... Well, maybe it is. But we need you. I need you. No, you don't. No, you don't. Not really. Everyone's alone, but we all survive. I don't just want to survive. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Martin. Martin, look at me. Look at me and tell me what you see. I see. I see. I see you. I see you. John. John. <laughs> I see you. Oh, Martin. <laughs> I was on my own. I was all on my own. Not anymore. Come on. Let's go home. How? Don't worry. I know the way. Everything all right? Just making sure it works. Still don't think we should have brought it. Oh, it's better than no warning at all. Mm. Especially if I'm trying not to uh, see things, you know. I guess. You're unpacked then? Hmm? Oh, yes. Much as I can without any wardrobes to speak of, at least. Yeah, it's, it's not exactly the Ritz. Well, it technically still belongs to Daisy, so... I'm just glad it's not some sort of kill room. Or, or it is, and she just cleaned it up really well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are we... Are we safe here? Safe as anywhere else. If Elias wanted to find us, I imagine he could, but... I doubt the police would be able to. If nothing else, I'm hoping there'd be some jurisdiction complications in Scotland or so, something. Somehow I don't think Daisy will be worried about jurisdictions. I... I don't think she'd come here. Doesn't look like this place has been used for years. And if she does? Well, at least we'll know where she is. <laughs> Besides, I'm more worried about the other hunters. Or the... the Sasha thing. Last I heard, they still hadn't found any bodies. A lot of destruction, a lot of blood. But that's it. You think they're still out there? Hopefully a long way out there. But I think we're okay. Not much in the way of food, is there? Oh, n no, not yet. I was actually going to head down into the village to go pick something up. Hmm. Maybe give Basira a call to check in, because Daisy apparently couldn't pick a safe house with a signal. I so. think that's rather the point. Mm. Anyway, don't tell me the phone box down there doesn't appeal to your retro aesthetic. It might. Maybe. You'll be okay here? I'll be fine. How was she? Oh, same as last week. Institute still crawling with police. I mean, they've finished all the interviews. Apparently they're calling it a terror attack. Doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Appropriate, in a way. Mm. Does she know who they're looking to blame? They're not really talking to her about it. Sectioned or not, I guess ex-police only gets you so far. Mm. Does she know if they've found the old prison yet? The panopticon, or like Magnus's body? I don't know how hard they're looking, to be honest. Basira says a few of them got lost in the tunnels for over a day, and it's not like the promise of an old man's corpse is much of a motivator. Mm. Still, she did manage to talk them out of burning the whole place to the ground. Oh, ah, actually, that reminds me. Um, ah, these, these are the statements? Uh, yes. Basira said last week she'd send some up as soon as the archives weren't a crime scene. Yes. Uh, she wasn't sure which one she'd read already, so she, she just said she'd send a bunch. There's tapes in here as well, 
Did she say anything about tapes? She didn't mention it, but I didn't check it till after the call. Mm. I assume it's her attempt at a, a, a varied diet, eating your greens, you know? <laughs> Probably. I'm sure it'll work fine. Cool. Well, as fun as listening to you monologue is, mm. I will give you some privacy. Go for a walk. Let me know if you see any good cows. Uh, obviously, I'm going to tell you if I see any good cows. <sighs> right. <clears throat> statement of Hazel Rutter regarding a fire in her childhood home. Original statement given August 9th, 1992. Audio recording by Jonathan Sims, the archivist. Statement begins. Hello, John. Apologies for the deception, but I rather wanted to make sure you started reading, so I thought it best not to announce myself. I'm assuming you're alone. You always did prefer to read your statements in private. I wouldn't try too hard to stop reading. There's every likelihood you'll just hurt yourself. So just listen. Now, shall we turn the page and try again? And there, I think, we are brought just about up to date. I have enjoyed our little trip down memory lane, but past here lies only impatience. You are prepared. You are ready. You are marked. The power of the ceaseless watcher flows through you, and the time of our victory is here. Don't worry, John. You'll get used to it here, in the world that we have made. Now, repeat after me. You who watch and know and understand none. You who listen and hear and will not comprehend. You who wait and wait and drink in all that is not yours by right. Come to us in your wholeness. Come to us in your perfection. Bring all that is fear and all that is terror and all that is the awful dread that crawls and chokes and blinds and falls and twists and leaves and hides and weaves and burns and hunts and rips and bleeds and dies. Come to us. I open the door! John, John, wake up! No! Uh, what? Martin? John! What? what? Oh, God. It, what happened? I, I don't, I don't know. Everything... It's all gone wrong. Help me up. Uh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't go outside. It's... It's real bad. Oh, God. I, I don't know if it's just here, or no. if it... No, it's everywhere. They're all here now. I can feel all of it. John, I'm scared. The whole world is afraid, Martin. Because of me. And the Watcher drinks it all in. John, look at the sky, Martin. Look at the sky. It's looking back. Ha 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 